getting ready. It's still going down. Well, it looks like they are going to go with a stable match. I said there'd be some kind of fuckery at the end of this, and then there would be a big uh, eight-man situation with these guys. Obviously, we all saw this coming, I think. And it looks like that's what we're going to get. When Raw, Raw, SmackDown, WWE, or AEW end, tune in to The Joe Cronin Show. Live, live, live on YouTube for review and reaction. Joe Cronin and Jake break down all the action. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show. Your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Mature audiences only. Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show. Cronin Show, hit the like button. Holy crap, the end, but... Man, I, I didn't think it was going to get that weird at the end. I didn't think it was going to get that weird at the end. That was something different. It got extra weird at the end there. Unbelievable stuff. What's up, chat? Who's feeling a little weird downstairs, huh? Who's feeling a little bit weird downstairs? Was feeling a little bit weird down there in the weird in the in the cockles area. I can feel it. We gotta bring in the man with the large, large private parts. And you know who I'm talking about. The man with the large, large private parts is indeed. J -j 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 Jake DeMarco I hear the battle cry ah. He is Jakey Poo What's up Jakey Poo You want some of daddy's pee pee pants huh? It's NXT Vengeance That's right not NXT Valentine's Day Massacre They didn't want to say massacre So they give you the devil V of Vengeance It could have been Valentine's Day Vengeance Could have been that But uh nope it's vengeance uh, tonight. The slow, uh, the show took a little uh, steep roll downward down a roller coaster, and uh, but it ended with a uh, probably the most interesting thing of the entire night was at the end, obviously. So 
Hey. Not yeah, they wanted to end on a big note, that's for sure. Give us uh, something to talk about. Holy hell. Uh, essentially the end of the Undisputed Era. You know, Fish is, is not there currently, but my God, that, you know, they, they were trying to make it seem like, oh, Balor was going to join Undisputed Era for a second there, and then, uh, you know, that super kick out of nowhere from Cole, that was great. I didn't think, you know, they were going to go through with the attack, and then I'm like, maybe they will, and wow surprising entertaining i it's now, weird now we get you know they, they wanted to go two heel two face originally we heard it was going to be cole and kyle as faces clearly that's not the case and i'm happier this way i like adam cole as a heel so you become a shit bomb well yeah but i mean yeah okay okay jake you were right on match one okay okay Okay, okay. Yeah, Spaz, I think I was right about the whole night, but uh, we'll talk about that after. The only thing I missed was the... Uh, well, no, I missed the main... I I picked uh, Balor to lose the belt, and I picked uh, the um, the women. The women, the first match with the women, I didn't think um, Dakota was going to win. Um, I wanted I, them I to win. I had picked Dakota Kai. I, I wanted them, and I'm so glad they I won. Wanted Dakota them. Kai is so amazing. God just, damn, was that a great match. That was the that best was, match of the night. Yeah, it? that was that was my favorite match of the night. That was so much fun. Those women, I mean, you always hear me say, oh, they killed it. No, they killed it. They they absolutely tore you know the, the, the small audience down that they had. I almost wish they didn't pipe in the fake crowd noise from the Thunderdome and just let the audience they did have, the small audience there, just mic them up louder because they were loud all night. They were with everything. They were involved in every pinfall, submission attempt, kick out. Uh, you know, right away, you had that huge power bomb on the Kai, and then it, it just seamless transition to the Cloverleaf, and you're like, all right, things are getting good here. And then they just got bigger and better. So, oh shit! Oh yeah! Please stop punching my god! Oh my god! Shell dropping twenty one. Fenty Uno. Okay, as me or has the luster of NXT takeovers worn off? I used to look forward to them, but now they are just me. A yeah. few decent matches, but for me overall, a six out of ten. Will I remember this one? I doubt it. Yeah, Shell. Um, you know, we always wondered. We and this was. It's unfortunate that you go back and you could listen to us now. Uh, Shell, thank you for twenty one dollars. We always wondered, like, when is this gonna wear off? When are they finally gonna start hitting, having misses? And uh, I mean, yeah, they had a couple when things were still normal. But there's no doubt about it that the pandemic has really hurt NXT. I mean, they. They, it was there, a there's a few things that were affecting it. You were right, Joe, and you called this out to begin with. And, and, you know, one of the main things, obviously, was a change in talent. A lot of people went to the main roster, so that was the first thing. And then you said as well, the pandemic nailed it. That was spot on. But one thing that I really noticed today going back is commentary as well. Yeah. Moro's missing. Renee not being around. Moro's not missing. He's things. done. He's not doesn't work well, there. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's not there anymore, so he's missing from commentary. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's so... I was I was watching uh, some Hi, of Triple JR's H. best call. Want to hire Joe Triple H? Get some fucking fire back on the commentary. Triple H, where are you, Paul? But right. but you think about like when Austin got out of jail and and McMahon's in the ring and and you know Stone Cold Stone Cold and he's screaming and Jr. sounds like that's his son or his you know his best friend. Like he, there's so much emotional investment and weight in there that it's like. Oh my God! You have to be invested in this. How could you not be? Because he's so passionate about it. Yeah. Everyone's lacking that passion. Even the yep. stars are at times too. I don't feel that oomph. And I know part of it is how do you get excited to go out there and wrestle in front of a digital screen? Yeah, but you know what? Who cares? Because here's the thing, dude. Like, I mean, I can only use myself an example. And probably people think I'm always trying to put myself over, but I'm the only way I can give myself as an example. I'm calling fucking matches for companies. In my basement, I'm I'm putting the thing on the screen. I don't know what's going to happen, so I actually get excited, and I'm in my basement. So I don't believe that's an excuse. And what I heard tonight on commentary, a lot of times tonight on commentary, what I heard was three people all throwing in their little goofy thing to say, and it felt weird. It it actually feels like the video game where where someone goes, "Oh, he's really mounting a comeback," and then. 
You can tell he's feeling it now. Like, it's yeah, like, it felt like scripted and predetermined. It? Like they they only have a, a small selection of options of what they can say. Right. And it's you know predetermined and preselected. So like you just said, wow, what a maneuver! Oh, it is not. How's he going to get out of this one? You hear a lot of those very. Yeah, but you know what? Generic. You you can yell what a maneuver, and it actually sounds like you're excited. But it's the way <laughs> they do it. It's the way that they do it. That it's. But like, I'm saying what? you just it it's such vague and and drivelous nonsense like it, it just goes on and on but it, it's not specific really about the match it's just it's very vague it's it's again more of that like wow what a spot wow what but it doesn't have any passion to it there's no emphasis on on moves and moments and you don't have people hearkening back to what happened to build to this match and it, it just it's lacking and it makes you not as excited and i know that's one of the things that the takeover used to have in combination it was huge stars a rabid fan base and great commentary and we're missing essentially all three of those. We have stars, but not big stars. There's no major overstar right now. The commentary is lacking, unfortunately. It's not awful. It's better than Raw, but it's still not what it should be. And we don't have an audience, and that really kills this type of product especially. Both, you know, their home base being able to be at full sale that whole time, and when they were traveling for takeovers, the loudest, one of the loudest wrestling shows I've ever seen was the Takeover Twenty Five we went to in Connecticut. Right, it was incredibly loud because the, the fans are so dedicated and passionate, and they don't have that. So. You want it? I mean, listen. And speaking of doing commentary, it's time to do a quick commercial before we continue. It only take two seconds. Everybody. Go to Title Match Wrestling, Title Match Wrestling Network. They have a YouTube channel and they have a website. It's like the WWE Network for the indies. There's tons of eye per views from all over the country. People you love from AEW, WWE, NXT, everywhere. It's all there. Plus, my commentary is featured on the site on several matches, and there's more coming. Check this out. A redeemer. Short clothesline off the rope. Here Title Match again. Wrestling he Network. The clothesline. Oh, the no look super kick. And now signaling for the Rolling Thunder is Rob Van Dam. Van Dam off the rope. AJ Star coming. Standing drop kick. Both men scouting each other's maneuvers. And that's. When you guys go to Title. There's maneuver. When you go to Title Match Network, guys, and you guys, for $9.99 a month, a lot of you guys have signed up. The guys from Title Match hit me up and said they loved it. Use coupon code coupon code Cronin. You're gonna get half off on Title Match Network. Springboard, a phenomenal forearm. That's it. Look at this referee. Two and two. Referee almost didn't make it for that count. And of course, the referee looks familiar to you because it's Jerry Lynn. Styles didn't get everything he wanted on that move. He was in close quarters with Rob Van Dam, and he had to kind of makeshift it normally he'd like to get more explosiveness off that top rope and he didn't get it it affected the heck out of rob van dam but oh now will too you guys will get all live eye pay-per-views plus shoot videos interviews and stuff you've never seen before look at this comes inside for oh look oh my god what a monkey flip Unbelievable Title Match Wrestling Network, guys. Uh, subscribe to them on YouTube. Go to their website. Huge website. Awesome stuff. They work with some of the biggest names in the business right now. They're known everywhere. I am, dude, I'm very lucky to have a partnership with those guys. Use coupon code Cronin. And thank you to Shell for being our top dog here. $21. Vent the Uno. Dropping it in. We got you guys coming in now tonight. We want to talk about NXT. I want to see what you guys have to say in the chat. Leave your out of tens in the chat. What do you thought of NXT TakeOver tonight? Vengeance. Well, real quickly on the themes, I like the themes. I like numbers. I like when they say 22, 25, 28. But I do like when they tag on a little theme and I can kind of remember it. The problem is all the themed stuff hasn't really been good. Like when I I know that NXT did an in your house and I know it was terrible. That's all I know. I don't remember. All right, most of the most of the NXT stuff during the pandemic the past few months has not been good. I did like Halloween Havoc. That was like an outlier. But yeah, everything else, the TakeOver, TakeOver 30 wasn't great. In Your House before that wasn't really that good. Even TakeOver 31 wasn't anything stellar. Uh, Finn Balor's match was good, but it, it took that match to get there. You yeah. know, So everything else was pretty much a letdown. Yeah, TakeOvers without the crowds and without the, the real big stories. Uh, War Games was really good, but... It's hard to mess up war games. I mean, that, that's just a clusterfuck. Basically. Yeah, it's, it should. It's so exciting. It's but a it car crash. Been should have been so. better though. It still should have been better. It, it's still. It, yeah, I mean, it was. It, good, it, it was the best thing though. I think of the most of the COVID stuff. Yeah, out of last year, I would agree that war games, the whole show, that that would be my favorite NXT 
Uh, well, if you want to count the COVID stuff, I mean, obviously the one they did what was at Portland before in February before the pandemic hit. Um, but that's not remember. fair to judge because that had an audience. So, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had an audience. They, they <laughs> Essentially, don't... you know, that that was done right as the very end of you know civilization as we as we know it. One of the one of the best ways that I've been trying to combat the pandemic is just blaring the volume. I I try to watch the shows in a surround sound environment on the big screen it really helps it really does but i i can imagine that making a difference and and if you have the luxury of that being able to do that luckily if i was still at my mother's house i'd be watching with headphones on so i wouldn't be able to do that but you know being in my own house now with and, and luckily i won if i didn't win a surround system from my company too i won a free surround system or i wouldn't yeah, have that I, either I, i'm super lucky um but that was it, that christmas thing right yeah i won the raffle or whatever it yeah. worked but i always talk about it because fuck man i wouldn't have that if it wasn't for that and so most people don't have some fucking surround system because i know i wouldn't have had it and but it really makes a difference and it does maximize stuff but there is a bit missing there's a the, like nxt could come out tonight and they could nail it these matches could have killed it every match it could have been crazy and probably i still would have fallen into an eight because there's no crowd there to elevate it to the next level. Without a crowd, there's two points missing. Every, like at least two yeah, points. Yeah, that, that very minor audience was drowned out by the digital audience that they had, which was unfortunate. Because you can hear the non-digital audience, the live people chanting "too sweet," you know, and, and and clapping in unison and whatnot. But it was so, you know, quiet. Because you, know you, you know how you make How's up that? for it. People. Do you know you make up for it though? Is 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 what you just said earlier and what I just said? We just what we just ranted on. Is yeah. having the commentary be that good, and they yeah, don't have, have that. the commentary, and then mic them up more. Just just go ahead and mic up the audience louder too. My um my favorite things of the entire night, I can tell you right now, it's it's not much. You said it. You love the women's match. I love the first women's match too. Eli yeah. Drake showing up being L.A. Yeah, Knight. Eli Drake is now L.A. Knight. We have you know I I, I wasn't sure what other I knew we were going to get some sort of surprise tonight. I kept saying it. I, I got said, spoiled this, this morning. To you, I got spoiled this morning, so it didn't even. Did matter. you? Yeah. See, I avoided uh, a lot of those things. So. I was like, oh, Eli Drake is in NXT today, so he's going to be yeah. at the show. I thought he was going to come out during the show, though. That's the only thing that I went, oh, because I expected him to come out at the end. Because I expected the end to have fuckery, and it it did, but after the bell, and I thought for sure Eli Eli was going to show up right away. Yeah, I thought said, he was going to play into some type of you know angle, at least with the North American title or the NXT Championship. And mm -hmm. no, now he is LA Knight. Not sure how I feel about the. I name. don't know either. It's either wicked cool or stupid, and I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know. <laughs> I. Yeah. How about and, Lance and, Knight or, or like Cade Knight or like Johnny Knight or like Yeah, Brian the LA Knight. is what I'm hung up on. Not even yeah. the Knight part. The Knight. Yeah, what's I'm LA with. mean? What's that mean? I don't I think he's going for like a, a Los Angeles type LA Knight. Like that's what it seems, but I, I don't know for sure. And yeah. his Twitter's still at Eli Drake, so let's see what it what what happens going forward. Yeah, uh Taya Valkyrie signed as well. And then everybody, the, one, the biggest news story today, obviously, is Sammy Guevara getting pulled from the Impact tapings. Apparently, Sammy went and was flying. He was supposed to be there the day before in Nashville, but then he went the day of, only a few hours before. On his way to Nashville, he texted the Impact creative people saying that he didn't like the story that they Ooh. were giving him and wanted some things changed. The reason why, though, I guess, is because Jericho, I guess, pitched a story originally to Sammy and Impact and told Sammy that was the story. Impact didn't go with it, so they did a second pitch, and Impact went with that idea. But they never told Sammy about the second pitch, so he was going, and then he's like, wait, that's not what we're supposed to do. So I guess they're saying now that they're upset with him. They banned him from Impact uh, go moving forward, and that was Jericho's suggestion to Don Callis. So it sounds like wow. Jericho really threw him under the rug here. I, do you think he did it on bus? purpose to go to WWE? Because like maybe because I I don't know. It's so bizarre. Like all he did was say I don't like the creative decision this is heading into. Oh but my because god! Because he wasn't told the original. You know, it, it was a different story than he was originally told. From everything I read, it was like so bizarre. Dude, he got himself banned on Triple H. Was like, get yourself fired. I bet you. I swear to God, that's a Triple H thing, dude. Get yourself fired. Maybe, because it oh says right here, God. everyone had agreed to the initial creative ideas. Guevara sent text messages to Impact Wrestling officials and pitched alternative ideas. So that's what we were hearing. But then 
It said Sammy Guevara was originally set to be part of an impact storyline. He was pulled because, you know, uh, all the issues going on. So let me find the... Um, it said here that Sammy uh, obviously had concerns. You text them. That upset creative at Impact. They went ahead and talked to Tony Khan. Tony's worried that this affected business between them and Impact at this point in time. And, you know, it, it's weird, but I, I'm not sure, like, really who said what and what. You know, it just I, I don't know if he would think that this would get him fired. You know, it, it doesn't seem like that was his intention anyways but you never know like you said maybe it is a ploy for him to go to wwe maybe we're all falling for this and this is a work because to me this seems really like a work why yeah. would jericho openly admit to don Callis to ban sammy from impact wrestling yeah that doesn't make that sounds all like it's work because this is involved sammy, sammy he... just left the inner circle so of course jericho would be pissed yeah, yeah so jericho would screw him over and get him banned from impact and it sounds to me like this is a total work yeah i'm not buying it right now i think this is all creative bs and they're just trying to make people get riled up in it that's my take yeah someone's, it really doesn't make a much game. sense why sammy and why would they come out and say oh sammy text impact creative because he wasn't happy with the booking and they never come out with these details like this yeah ever. that's something we that's a weird thing to say i mean you know that's that, this is the kind of stuff that Meltzer would have to come out and these people would deny. Yeah, and Meltzer would normally attack people on Twitter. Exactly. So <laughs> all he, of this, I don't know if you guys pay attention, but you you attack AEW, Meltzer comes after you on Twitter. It's it's funny. And see, this is what happened. So Chris Jericho originally came up with the idea to include Sammy. Why is this, he pitched what, it to Tony? What does this have to do with NXT again? I don't get it. I, this is the biggest story of the day. So this oh, is what okay. everybody was talking about in the chat. So I just I wanted to get this out of the I, way. All right, right I didn't know if it tied in. I'm like, what do we? What is this? What is well, this? essentially, the fact that he might be everyone's saying is Sammy coming to NXT. That's that's the, the biggest tie-in to this. Uh, all day I've heard is Sammy Guevara coming to NXT. No is way. He coming to WWE. Is he leaving? Is he is he going to New Japan? Then is they he, wouldn't know because no, Jericho and them they wouldn't now he might go to new japan but jericho would never talk about it then he'd be like they'd just keep silent like well we're not gonna fucking mention that i think it's a good story i i, I don't yeah i agree with shia lecuck great name by the way in the chat he said it's a rad yeah. story and this is reverse kayfabe absolutely uh, i think yeah, they're, they're yeah. pulling those fabulous fucking shit bomb work, if i'm bro. wrong and it is real you then this sucks but hopefully oh, it's not bomb. the case comes a super chat shotzi almost smashed her face on the table doing the suicide dive yeah, dude, she went crazy. Shotzi almost died about three times tonight. I mean, because she's kind of a mess out there, but I like it. She's kind of like how Darby Allen, a little bit, not quite. I mean, I think Darby's a much better controlled, reckless person. I think Shotzi actually might get hurt eventually. Drew Barr, thank you for the $5, my friend. Yeah, she was. And then poor, wow. you know, Tony Storm's table it just fell apart on her. She didn't even have a chance to put Io Shirai through it. <laughs> she literally just starts moving stuff, and the thing just collapsed. I am the table, like just God. nothing. I, just, I, that's I, it. I actually picked that to be the worst match of the night, and I think it might have been. I think it was. I honestly think so as well, and I, I want to be disappointed, but because uh, they're they're three really good competitors. For the most part, I'm just, I said the same thing this past the other day. I'm not crazy about Io Shirai, and a lot of people are like, huh, why? No, I'm the uh, opposite. I, I think the other two women are the worst off in that match. I think Io Shirai is really good. She just doesn't, she, they're all great wrestlers. Uh, Tony's been getting better at telling more of a character side of her thing, you know, of herself. So that's been important. I, I, you know me, I can't stand Tony Storm. I don't understand that at all. She sucks. Yeah, you, you've never had any connection to her at all. No, so. man, she looks weird. Uh, I think she's. I don't know. I just don't. I, it's not that she, what she looks like. It's just I don't. I don't get it. Like people are like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna whack off to her." I'm like, I don't get. I don't get the looks of her. She looks weird. I don't. Oh, get Oh, she's the, definitely got that derriere that everyone loves. I, I don't. Mean, she's stacked don't, like you know. I mean, I don't know why, man. My 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 wife is half her. I I don't know. But anyway, the bottom line is her wrestling is just all right. Like I think she's pretty. I, good. I think she's really good at you know for the most part with her matches. She can usually give you like a solid seven and a half to an eight, depending on who she's working with. I don't. I don't. Oh man, I swear to God, I, you. I've I, seen two matches. I think you guys had to dig one up for me. I I think she wrestles six out of tens, and I think that. Martinez is sort of the a big girl who can have these 
sometimes have decent matches with people that I like. I like Martinez better than Tony Storm. Is what I'm trying to say. She works. She works better as a powerhouse role. Yeah. Same thing with like you know that Raquel Gonzalez style and and Rhea Ripley. Well, I would and, say Martinez style since Raquel's the rookie and Martinez. The yes, the yeah, one. but I'm saying that you know, uh, big person style. You know that the, when you get to a certain height, you start getting to be more uh, powerful in the ring. Is pretty much what I'm going for. So it works to a certain extent. But Io's, you know, the goddess of the sky. She's usually flying around, and it worked to a certain extent. But her coming off the light post looked cool. That was that was basically the highlight of the match. But the rest of it kind of just fell flat. Uh, the, the, you know, the six one nine was okay, and you know, there was a few things, but. Uh, there wasn't much to this match that I was really impressed with. I feel like their timing was off, and uh, to a cer- certain extent, it just didn't seem exciting, really. Right. Uh, there just wasn't much to me that grabbed me that I could gravitate towards, as were the first match I loved. So, Yeah, first match was great. The women did a great job in the first one, and then that three-way dance. I, I knew it was going to be bad. I mentioned on my predictions. I said, like, this is probably going to be the worst match of the night. And the reason why I said that in my predictions, I don't think I gave a real reason, but I knew the reason. And the reason is that Io Shirai, I think, is th- is the funnest of all of them. And I think even Io Shirai versus one of them would have been better. Um, but I just triple threats are always super difficult to right. achieve. Well, you know that as well as I do. That's why we didn't care for so many recent triple threats. I mean, men's and women's. I can't really think of a, a good one that we've had any time recently. Well, I think uh, a six-woman match. If that was a six-woman match, I think it would have been better. And if it was yeah, just yeah, oh, absolutely. But but triple threats are so it's it's a, it's a, it's a dance. It's an art form to pull off a proper triple threat because you you are either double teaming somebody the entire time to make it look believable, uh-huh. and then you have to fight with whoever's left. Or you have these awful, you know, so and so is sleeping spots. So you get the one on one moments. So you really have to balance out your spots properly because you can't oversell one person's move because someone else always has to be selling for the next person. You know, you don't want all three people just laying down the whole time. Therefore, triple threats are difficult to navigate and plan and book properly. This suffered at times. You know, there was moments where it felt flat and boring and there really was nothing going on. And it's it's a difficult thing for them to, to navigate with. So you have to be super exciting in triple threats or have an excellent story to tell. And they really had neither here. Yeah, I agree. I wasn't. It, was, it wasn't a compelling story. I felt like EO would, would win no matter what. I thought like that was kind of obvious, but... Uh, going forward, uh, besides that, there wasn't really much of a story here. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't think. I just knew. I just. I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about everything because I haven't been watching NXT that much, so I was worried about my predictions. But what I knew was, I was like, I know this ain't going to be good. You know. Yeah, you were you were pretty spot on for the most part. Not. I mean, re- I, mean I got. I think I got three out of the five. Yeah, for the most part. I, that's well. The majority. I mean. I honestly though the the two two of the better matches of the night. I mean, well, the so the women the women's opening match, I think we agree was like the best thing and then the second match yes. the second men match did a good Johnny job. Gargano, the North American NXT champion taking on Kushida. I'm not a big Kushida fan either because he's another one that's just another Japanese wrestler for me. He's a he's a good wrestler, he's good in the ring. You know he's going to deliver, but what what about him makes him stand out or feel special or what what, you know, separates him from anybody else on the roster i can't pick him apart from anybody he's like he's like orange cassidy without the gim without the <laughs> without the thumbs up or whatever he looks i know he's yeah doing the- I, I get i get what you're going for you know he's got the denim and yeah but kushida is a great wrestler no doubt he's, he's exciting in the ring when he turns it up and he has someone to wrestle well against and this was kind of that dream match scenario it wasn't my dream match it was other people's but i really enjoyed this match I mean, that Northern Lights suplex was such a near fall. That was a thing of beauty. They really got the crowd into this. That Tornado DDT, the most dangerous move of all time, that looked great. And there's so many great near falls here. And the selling, oh, Johnny selling that arm really just yeah. was amazing. That was top notch. I, I, I really enjoyed this match. Yeah, I And think- it was long and it didn't feel long. How long do you think this match was? How long was it? I thought it was like 11 minutes. It was 24 minutes long. Jesus. So you just proved my point exactly. It was long and did not feel like it overstayed its welcome. I felt like it was too short. I was going to say that. 
I, that's exactly how I felt at first. And I looked at my time and I was like, whoa. I thought I messed up at first. And then I looked and I'm like, no, it's past I, I mean, that's, I, I'll that's be right. honest. When I, when I said 11, I was like, man, maybe I should have said 15. But Jesus Christ, 20 something minutes. I would have. If you told me it's not 11. 2450. If you told me it's not 11, you got two more chances. I would have bet 13 and I would have bet 16. And, dude, I would have lost everything because I would have bet wrong. Because I, I, wow, my, I mean, my concept of time is oh, is a mess. Shit bomb! And in this case. You become. Spaz Phoenix. A shit bomb. Ellen I tell you the other three women they signed recently people are saying WWE are going to fire more people but NXT are on the pickup. Yeah, yeah I don't the, know. The NXT are hiring more people. The main roster might be thinning, though. That is possible. Yeah. I don't know. It could yeah, be. Yeah, Gigi that they hired, Priscilla, um, she's she's on the roster now as well. I mean, they're, they're hiring people left and right. MSK had their takeover debut tonight, obviously. And this match, you know, for the Dusty Tag Team Classic on the men's side, it wasn't bad, Joe. It wasn't. It just, to yeah, me if, personally, wow, it missed. went too long. And they missed, dude. Like, I was hoping, like, in my review or in my predictions, I said, I hope this surprises everybody and they just go knock down, drag out insane and they do something and they whatever. And I just watched it like that was the that was the first if, if you were trending, like looking at the charts. Right. That was the first trend downward of the night. Really. That was the one that it, everything dropped down from there. And I went, oh, and then things started going down. And really, the show didn't pick up again until the the last three minutes of the Finn Balor match, I think, and then yeah, because because the main event was very plotting, methodical, slow, yeah, building, and and they were both you know, but it was telling a story, if, so I, I yeah. don't want to take away too many points. For there, there, it. I that's know what where an audience hurts. You, you hope the audience starts riding that match, and there's, yeah. there's no audience though, so that's the problem. Well, that's the thing, and then once they started to to get the little bit of crowd into it, you know, they switched gears at the very end there and got the home audience to be excited as well, but. It's hard to navigate when you don't have an audience. I, I, I can't, you know, overstate that enough. I've said it a bunch tonight, but well, so MSK, Wesley, extremely MSK? impressive. MSK? Is that what you just said? <laughs> Same with Nash. I mean, I I really I thought these two would win and it'd be a face victory here since we had the heels win it in the female side of things. I was right and I, I was very happy with this, you know, match at first. It was going at a very good pace and they showed a, a, a serious side to MSK that we haven't seen yet as well. A few people made note of this to me and reached out and were like, wow, it's nice to see a different side of them. And I'm like, yeah, that serious you know, notion that, all right, I'm going to start smacking myself and, and really show you that I have no fear. What am I going to have to do to keep you down? I like that, that aggression, that that hunger to win the match. Excellent to have that side shown. Problem is, they did too much to each other. At one point in time, it was like, oh, we hit him with the hot fire flame. Oh, then a moonsault. Oh, then we did the spiral tap. Two count. All right, electric chair. And then we're going to do the top rope doomsday device. And then we're going to do <laughs> a bunch of strikes. And now... Two count. Yeah, it all just felt the, like nothing. It, well, that's the thing. It was like, all right, we did the, the, the double team lung blower. I was like, what? I've, I don't even know the last time I've seen that. I was like, holy hell. Two count. Ticket to mayhem. Two count. Drake was cleared, and they were like, oh, my God, and then the springboard, and we got a huge, that, that friggin' spinning, I guess it's corkscrew, but the, like the, the side neck breaker there when and they actually got the victory, and I was like, finally. And the, did you have to kill him? You know, did someone snipe him from the back? And, the commentary and could have helped. The pinfall. If the commentary was better too, that would have helped that match. But it would have. But I felt like at that point they had done so many moves and spots past like the fifteen minute mark. It was a nineteen minute match almost, just about. And like the last three minutes to me was like, all right, you guys have officially had too many near falls. Now you have endured way too much punishment. What's going to happen next week when you guys have a match and you beat somebody in, in eight minutes and it's like, oh, that was, you know, the, I know it's like, all right, this is the finals and you're supposed to go all out and have that. But I, to me personally, it just felt like, all right, this is a little bit too much. And that's one of my complaints about AEW at times with their tag division, all the false finishes. And so th what they did was impressive, technically sound, looked good to me, but it just was like an overload of sensories. You know, it just was like, I, I how much more can the human body take? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I yeah, it just nothing, nothing ever clicked for me in that match. And it was unfortunately just like a run, a runaway train thing. They had the little story thing about his dad and stuff, which is funny because it reminded me of my dad and everything. But 
Um, and then they had the little story of, of course, this new team, and wow, they're, they're they had good they had good charisma on the interview. Like I actually think yeah, their interview absolutely. their interview before the match was better than the match. I was like, cool, what a great interview. And then they went out there and just kind of, you know. And I think part of it too is the teams. Like, I don't think they're particularly that exciting yet. I don't really feel the bond with them yet. And then the the young legends or whatever the fuck they were. What was the name of the other team? Uh, the grizzled young veterans. The grizzled young veterans. They might as well Drake be called. Gibson. They might as well be called generic guys thrown together. I mean, so basically the problem is. You have two rookie type guys that are a great story, um, but unfortunately their competition sucks. Like this guy right here, I mean, he looks fucking like he's got the personality of a gnome's cunt. And then the <laughs> other the other guy standing behind him looking like he just smelled the guy's fart. I mean, so these two guys, like, oh my god, you suck. Like so then you get these two like I like these yeah, two Drake guys. And Gibson don't offer much and, and they're pre match uh the promo that they had was very kind of formulaic as well for yeah. them. That's the problem. You I'll know? tell you, that's the problem. I, I, I felt I was about 7 out of 10 invested, maybe 6 or 7 out of 10 invested in this face rookie team. Um, you know, well, What's the name of the uh, the team that just got fired from Sm uh, Forgotten Sons? That's who these guys remind yeah. me of, but, but like a lesser version yeah. of the Forgotten Sons. Yeah, for, like even, le even more Forgotten Sons. Like, and, right. and I know people give MSK shit because they were the rascals. They've always been big into marijuana. Now they're MSK, you know, the marijuana smoking kids. That's their, their gimmick here. But they're like, oh, they're wearing green gear just like TH2 wears, you know, the hybrid 2. And it's like... They're both marijuana themed. Can't everybody be marijuana themed? It's like you don't uh, own the specific. Dude, stop with the marijuana. Listen, we love weed. Smoke up. I love it. But you know what? Stop. Everybody loves weed, but you don't need to make it about everything. It either, doesn't I mix know, with so. wrestling. Like being fucking stoned doesn't mix with wrestling. It's no. it, you're you're it, dumb. It works for watching wrestling, I mean, not for wrestling. Philly, pretty, yo, this whole city. My Valentine. Yo, we might eat our own shitty. Yeah. You want to get the JCS mask? In Philly, we're pretty. In Philly, we're pretty. In this whole city, we'll eat our own shitty. In Philly, that's why our mascot looks like a... Happy V-Day from Gritty. NXT hasn't been the same since Mauro left. Very few matches I enjoyed. Grizzvets vs. MSK had too many near falls not believable at end. Kind of wish Studios Ball or Cole not turn. I agree, Fade to Black. I mean, it's a big problem, Fade to Black, when you lose the voice of NXT, Moro Ronaldo, and then you lose the voice of NXT, the fans. It's just a huge thing. They're missing... NXT really relies on fans and the commentary to be exciting, and I've, I'll just... Listen... I'm ne I'm never gonna be Jake, I'm never gonna be happy. And I'm never I'm sorry, I'm never gonna let this go. And you're gonna hear about it and you're gonna see people forever be like, Joe's salty again about Vic Joseph. I am. I'm gonna be salty forever because they chose Vic Joseph over me. It wasn't like they hired Vic Joseph and I'm sitting over here and I think I should be hired. It's they literally listened to me. I sat in a monitor and they chose Vic Joseph over me. I don't know what the reason is other than he's a tall Nosferatu motherfucker, but the bottom line is that ain't going to get it done. He's pretty good, and, and I like him as like a, if he was like on ESPN or something maybe, but as far as going to that next level with a voice, like I just don't think it. I don't think he has that. And the and the three of them throwing out their little things, even Wade Barrett is like a is like a step down from Nigel McGuinness. You know, we could do it a million times. Oh, what a stop by Balor! He might be out. Oh, Moro! I can see that he might be—he might have—he might have separated his clavicle, Moro. He's got his injured. He's out. He's done, Moro. He's here. Comes the referee. Oh my God! There it is for Gargano. A oh, one, two, no, no, no! He kicked out. I can't believe it. The fortitude right now, Moro. You can see it on his face. The desperation. He's got. He's gonna have to put him away again. He's got to do it fast, more. If he stays on him, he can't sit there being shocked about the fact he didn't get the victory. He's got to stay on him. And that's what he does. Oh, what a crushing pile driver. And that might do it. 
and Mike Derry Mora, wow, two! Like, and you're just like, holy shit, this is fucking amazing. But now, it's just fucking one after one that they're just shouting out things, and you're like, oh. And that's the thing, like, literally, as I was summing it up before, those that was you know part of the notes that I had. Like, that's that's really what happened in in the the match at the end of it it was like oh carter comes down he's got this big moonsault and then lee comes in with the spiral tap two count like i said and then the, oh electric chair and then they you know the huge doomsday device it's like oh bam you know they got him up and then all the striking and then another two it's like but but again commentary they're not like oh my god and like invoking emotion or, or trying to to you know captivate anyone it's just yelling the name of the moves it's it's just they're all excaliburs i i dude i, I don't know what and I, when they do inject a little bit of emotion you have wade trying to be a heel but then he's a hypocrite 20 seconds later by saying something as a face because they can't cross the lines yeah. apparently dude, i mean so, it's Corey graves again is what happens it's like stop no stop that Get, just become sadly. just dude become a fucking heel like give me a heel guy and there's another thing you, you know I don't know, man. We need a fucking heel, bro. We, we, you always need a heel, and y- you need someone to to work against. I don't think you know? they always. I think they did. People did leave it behind. It got goofy after a while. There's always a bad guy announcer, but this is a time where I think they need bad guy announcers back, and I think they need a good one, not a Samoa Joe to say something little, or not a Corey Graves to say something snarky once in a while. I'm talking about you need a full douchebag on that on that announced team and it needs to be not forced and it needs to be there needs to be a story as to why the person's so upset at people and and it's not hard to do anytime you want to call me triple h let's write this and let's excite people because you can't excite people right now let me tell you that yeah, yeah no doubt about it. i am and, and god I, and you suck <laughs> and msk i think they do have a future in nxt i mean impact failed them and i i see them going ahead and and really they could be something special. They obviously let them win tonight. They have plans for them being the new Dusty Classic winners, so we're going to see them get tag title shots. And All right. Uh, I Hopefully they can kind of refine a little bit of them because they, they were pretty decent at delivering the promos before the match. Like you said, it was believable. It, it, it conveyed emotion, and, and it made you feel something. That alone was better than their match. The match itself wasn't bad. Whoever produced it, I would give a hard time to, saying slow things down a little bit, let these guys sell. Nothing feels impactful when you do a massive move. You know, choke slam, two count. Pile driver, two count. Stunner, two count. RKO. You know, you get the point. It ha- Nothing looks effective. Nothing looks painful if you're able to kick out at two every time and then not react to anything. You got to get right back up and take the next move. Hopefully they can slow things down and give these guys some better structure to their finishes. But what I will compliment them for is Cameron friggin' Grimes. I am loving this storyline. I know I don't think you saw NXT this week, Joe, but Cameron Only Grimes invested it. in AMC. Yeah, he invested in AMC, yeah. <laughs> and in real life, right? Rich, in, in real, real life. life, he invested yeah. in AMC. Yeah, yeah. And he, he bought it when it was at 13-something, and when it went to hundreds of dollars, he sold. So now he's the richest man in NXT. You know, allegedly, they're all teasing him, but they decided to turn this into his gimmick. So Wednesday night, he came in all rich, dumping money, dancing, you know, (laughs) swimming on his money in the ring, and he's got his kisses, grits, and I'm going to the moon, obviously, with the catchphrase, the Dogecoin, and the GameStop stuff. So it's it's funny. I like this. He's really, really talented for the most part in the ring, so this kind of character change I'm liking. Let's see where they go with it, but I'm enjoying it for now. It's got me. It's stupid. I know it's stupid, but it's funny. I like it so far. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I think it's funny. I like that too. I guess they, I, they could kill it very easily, though. Look at the Nia stuff. They they killed that on SmackDown. It took them it took them one week to get that ruined. Yeah. Monday night they hated that Nia said my hole. By Tuesday it started taking off, and you had all these companies paying attention to it, and all these people were putting memes together, and you had actual famous musicians putting you know edits together and all this stuff and everybody was getting big into it on social media so wwe then goes into it full force and they ruin it like they do every time and they have her basically do the same thing again on smackdown just to no effect and it doesn't work because you can't recreate lightning in a bottle so right yeah i mean um yeah money bags i watch nxt and i watch WWE because it's my job so that's why i watch it 
He's like, why would you even watch WWE? Why would you go to work in the morning? I mean, essentially, you, I mean, you, you probably don't NXT, like your job. Usually, the takeovers are, are, and this was still a good show. This is far better than Raw. I, I, I would give this a seven out of ten tonight. I, you know, for the first match and the second match being excellent, and I really liked the main event for the story they told. It wasn't this nonstop action, probably that we were all hoping for. I was hoping for this big slap, you know, drag out knuckle dragging fight between these two. Instead, it was a you know, slow-paced, methodical, submission-heavy, uh, focused match. And it, it wasn't bad, but like you said, the last three minutes when they really picked up the pace and started to brutalize the hell out of each other even more so than what we had seen in the match thus far, it got to be really good. Uh, it was like the 21-minute area when it finally really went into overdrive. That's when we saw that crazy bitter end. And then we saw that amazing DDT, and then the quick enziguri, and then from there we got the 1916 and uh, the coup de gras, and it you know just beautiful, beautiful ending. So love it. I, yeah. I think I had the match at 25 minutes and like 20 seconds at the end. So yeah, if I had to go through everything um, real quick, just to roll through it, I mean, I would say that. Uh, yeah, best match goes to uh, Shotzi, Ember Moon, Dakota, and Raquel. That's the best match of the night. Uh, second best match of the night would be um, Gargano and uh, Sh- uh, Kushida. And then I'd probably have to, if I had to pick a third place match, I'd probably give that to the main event. Um, and then really I would sort of say that, you know, Io Shirai, Tony Storm, and Martinez was just terrible, and I would put theirs as fifth place last. Yeah, yeah. I, I would put the MSK match as fourth. Yep. Third would be Ballard. I'm not giving an order. I'm just saying, like, order. no. I, I, but I, I would, I would say the women's would be first, and yeah, the animals would the, be second. The one women's match is the best one. The other one's the worst one. And then, uh, yeah, MSK that match was second to worst, second to last, worst. Um, I, I'd probably give NXT tonight. Ah. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to be nice, I'd throw a seven out of ten at this, but I'm gonna have to give this a six, out of a six, really? a six five or a seven. I don't know, like, I, I, I'm gonna go six point five out of ten tonight. Hmm. I could, I could see that. I mean, makes sense. I'm, I'm staying with a seven. I could even go seven point five, honestly, because I mean, I really, really did enjoy three fifths of the show. The ending was cool too. Like the ending of, we don't the know what's going to happen. Great. We don't know what's going to happen. Adam Cole now goes heel. And as much as I thought he and, and Kyle were going to be the faces out of the two for undisputed era. And then we, you know, kind of see the split of redragon as well. What happens? No, yes. Ki- no, that's not the case. And now we don't know who stays for the rest of them. Is, is, I don't know. It's a great story to tell. I'm interested to see what happens. Bobby Fish, when he's back, he, where does he lie? Yeah, wh- how does he play into all of this? It's it's interesting. Roderick Strong was really perplexed and confused. He didn't know whether to go with Adam Cole or stay by Kyle and Finn's side. Everybody acted it well, so it felt very emotional and, and like a real betrayal. Um, Adam Cole's great at betrayals. So. Yeah, it was, it was definitely weird, man. I, at first, I thought... For, for in my predictions, I was like, well, something is going to lead to a stable match, a four on four stable fight or something, and so there it was, all set up, and then all of a sudden they attack Balor or whatever his face is attacks Balor, the goofy looking raccoon eyed fuck. Um, he attacks Balor, and then they attack him, and then everybody's breaking up, and I'm like, whoa, all right, didn't I mean I saw something coming, but I didn't see that come, and then I didn't see that coming, so it was like, wow, okay, no. nice. I didn't as well. Good honestly. idea too to make you try because some of the a lot of people, Jake, a lot of people said, "Hey, I haven't been watching NXT in a while, but I'm going to check well, this out." So now they might maybe yes. Like, oh, a lot of people were happens. checking out tonight, and obviously, wrestling fans uh, probably don't have the biggest plans on Valentine's Day, and I don't think a lot of people have plans on Valentine's in the COVID era, anyways. So it's not like you're taking anybody out to eat tonight. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, you got wrestling there. So fortunately, I should say not unfortunately, but fortunately you got wrestling there to keep you busy. Hopefully NXT did well tonight. I, I would like to see them benefit from this. They, they told some good stories, had some good matches, and it really made a, a 
not a mess in a bad sense, you know, like in a way, like oh, what's next? What happens now? I mean, Adam Cole, he's, he's heel again. I love heel Adam Cole. So that's good. But does this bring is Pat he really McAfee heel? back in as a heel? What happens then? Yeah, maybe it's Pat and Bobby Fish, so there's still four of them. Yeah, and, and we could see, you know, because I agreed. I thought we were going to get some type of, like, not the war game setup, but like that, you know, the faction rivalry well, cause where gonna... Pat McAfee would come back and because we, we saw them fight at war games. But, uh, you know, I thought we would get some type of other, you know, matchup here, and that wasn't the case, and I'm I'm very surprised. So, I just think, um, you know, yeah, money bags. We're gonna have to ban you until you tell us who you really are. Okay, if you're upset, call up the show, money bags, and we'll you you uh, let us know. Give a, give a call to the show. Come on Discord, or call uh, call the show. Whatever you want to do, and we'll see who you really are, and then maybe we'll unban you. But uh, I'm gonna pretty much keep you banned because I'm pretty sure you're probably a scumbag. Um. But yeah, let's go to the donos. But yeah, I think that, you know, Kyle O'Reilly, they're going to push him as like Kyle O'Reilly, the wrestling machine, or he's going to be like his own thing. Like, I think, you know, they see him as a, like a Ken Shamrock meets Kurt Angle type. And uh, I don't know. Shit bomb. We'll see. Spaz Phoenix. You become a shit bomb. Spaz Phoenix has donated $10 Canadian. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Spaz Phoenix. Thank you so much. And by the way, we all loved so much Travis TLC's fucking clip of Scott flipping out. We all been laughing at it all day and this week. Um, last night that was hilarious. Well, very well done. I got a little bit of a take on it right here that I'm going to preview. I'm going to be turning this into a donation. I hope you guys enjoy it. But why are by you're fucking done, Mister Jacob. You're fucking done, by. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> All your fucking shenanigans. It's done, by. You're so lucky I'm not down there in Texas, by. Yeah, because the alien would come and get you, by. <laughs> I've already called the Texas RCMP, and they're coming for you, and they're going to search. Ah, oh, your fucking devices, by. You're fucking done, by. You're really done, boy. You're really dead, boy. You're really messed up. You're gonna be destroyed. You're really done, boy. You're really done, boy. I'm done with you. You know, you're really done, boy. You're fucking done, by. <laughs> you're fucking done, by. I will find you. <laughs> Look at I'm this gonna call your work until you're unemployed. You really done, boy. The RCMP, you're gonna get destroyed. You really done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You really done, boy. You fucking done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. Why? I'm really done. I'm sick of every single one. You're really done. You're really dead. I'm on a board a thousand boards and you're friggin' head. You're really done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You're really done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You're fucking done, boy. You were gonna be completely destroyed. You're fucking done, boy. You're really That I ain't down there in Texas. But it's okay. Because the Texas RCMP are coming for ya. <laughs> Dude, I can't get over that Travis DLC stuff, man. That was too good, man. Good shit. Um, anyway, uh, that was fun. Uh, back to the donos about NXT Vengeance. 
So yeah, I'm going to turn that into some kind of donation. Probably 10 to 20 seconds long, I don't know. Anyway, here's back to the donos. NXT sucks now because it went to Network TV and Vince has his grubby pedophilic hands on it now. Same issue happened with Shane at DCW and streamed it on WWE.com. Mm. Minute it went to Network, Vince has more saying fucks it up. Said before this would happen. Yeah, I mean, it's... We, we worried about that. We talked a lot about that. And, I you know, I really think it's a big thing on the crowd. I, I Man, I think a, a big part of it's the crowd, but it's a lot of things. You know what I mean? Fade to black. So, like, fade to black, it's 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 number one that now they're on TV. So now it's not. it doesn't feel like the fun show it was that was left alone. You know, I don't think Vince has too much influence, by the way. He really doesn't. I think that this is still a lot on Triple H and them. So going to network TV is a negative. Losing more Ronaldo and, and Nigel is a negative. Having no crowd in the audience is a negative. Quite honestly, AEW is a better atmosphere because it feels like it's open and it just looks like, I don't know, it's more, it just looks more open. There's something about it that looks better. This looks like they're recording Shotgun Saturday Night. Like I said that even tonight, I said this kind of looks like like Saturday Night Wrestling something. It doesn't look like NXT TakeOver. It looks like Saturday Night Wrestling's spotlight or something in a dungy place and there's really not a whole lot you can do about that because this is but you know because I agree with what they do I like that there's people spread around the ring and then the, the all the digital video uh, you know behind them kind of making it look like this like big epic thing like a, a nice tv or sound studio so it's just too bad that you know and there's something else that I'm missing now too but the bottom line is yes no fans you know, it's now on TV. I think TV should have helped it in a way, too. I think, yeah, there's a negative to that, but it should have helped. But, you know, I, I don't think NXT does enough of the funny stuff and also enough of the storylines. You know, Yeah, a, they a, just a, have a lot of great wrestling, but yes. there's no reason to be invested in the matches. That was their big problem the last few weeks, why they've gotten such terrible, abysmal, piss-poor ratings, Joe, was because they had the Dusty Classic. People don't care about these tag teams involved in the Dusty Classic. Most of them were not pre-established or existing already, so they threw together these oddball teams, and not like the fun ones they usually do that end up winning, you know, the Samoa Joe-Finn Balor combination. Uh, the only oddball really we got was Thatcher and uh, Tommaso Ciampa, and putting them together was really odd because they literally just fought each other in the fight pit. So, it, you know, there, there wasn't a chance for them to work as a team yet, and uh, well, look at this. Pretty much, bottom line of all of it, 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 it ended up not working because there was no investment and no reason to care about anybody for the most part in the Dusty Classic until you got to the finals tonight. So, look at it like this. You know, the women's division in NXT at first wasn't the greatest thing. And then the women's division became like one of the best things ever. It was so good. It became, it was on top. Then the women's division took a dip at some point. It, it took like a, I want to say, eight month rest. And now it's back again, pretty much, I think, but not not to the level it was. They, they but still have an but, amazing, one of the best women's rosters. But I'm I not trying say. to talk about the women. I'm talking about the. I'm talking about tag team right now. Yeah. Tag team, tag team division is not good right now. No, not no, they good. have no tag division. But they that's did why at they one had point. to make all these teams throw together, and that's why the tag titles aren't defended on Takeover yet again. They weren't defended at you know the War Games one. They're not defended tonight. It's and Pat McAfee's hilarious. He tweeted out that you know I told you Pat, hashtag Pat was right that Adam Cole is a scumbag. You know your your internet hero was a treasonous scumbag all along, and I I knew it. It's just it's hilarious to see him gloating. But hey, Pat was right. Adam Cole turned on us, so yeah, he is a scumbag. That allows him to come in and Adam Cole to be with probably. So probably it could be Adam Cole that goes solo. You know, I don't know. Somebody's yeah, going could be. I mean, we we uh, we could see what happens. And see, if that's you know. the case, it could be that he's coming up for WrestleMania or. Something yeah, like NXT that. said it's Valentine's Day and Adam Cole just broke our hearts. No doubt. I mean, the Undisputed Era is done for now, essentially. And seeing them, you know, obviously with the Undisputed Era. Did they really you know, say that on Twitter? And, did they really yeah. say that on Twitter? They, oh, my they God. They really did. That's pretty lame. I, that makes me chuckle. It goes with the Valentine's Day theme. No, I, I might have said it, too. It's just, it's, it's, it, it that's, <laughs> you saying that right now? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> hey. That's what hey. they said on Twitter. Hey, who typed that? Well, we know Renee Young's in charge of the Twitter now. I mean, shit yeah. bomb! <laughs> She's a loser. You become a shit bomb. What up, Spaz Phoenix? Spaz Phoenix, 
who likes to munch on people's lunch whenever he can, man. Spaz Phoenix and Jake with good predictions on NXT, good podcast. Go check out Spaz Phoenix on Spotify and on YouTube. Great podcast. I've tried to get him over here, but he never comes over here. I don't know why. He's fucking gold. I'll try to get him over here. Um, but uh, he's just interested in... Uh, Tell him and he will arrive. I don't think so. He but, said it the other day. He was like, Joe and I got to get together. Bomb. Yeah. You become no, like so. a shit bomb. <laughs> hey. He I've did. asked him. already asked him. Nazmu Hussein, uh, thank you for the uh, super chat, man. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much, dude. And thanks for uh, thanks for 9-11, too. Uh, so going forward... No, I'm just kidding. Now it's Nazmu. <laughs> thank you, Hussein, uh, for the 99 cents, man. I appreciate it, dude. Uh, what did you guys think of NXT? Leave in the chat. Um... I mean, trying to see if we have any big news, you know. I, Obviously, listen, shit, Eli Drake um, being LA Knight is huge, but become LA Knight, a shit bum. LA Knights, he just doesn't. It just doesn't look like. I don't know, man. Maybe that. Like would be, I said, I I want to see what they do with it, and <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I think he should be like Brand, Brandon Knight or something like that, or like like. But even that, I mean, yeah, I just don't like the LA part. The Knight is fine, but it, it, I mean, the Vegas Knights, the Vegas Golden Knights are going to sue him they're gonna be like we're not from la bro just so you know you know like we're from fucking vegas like i mean this is bullshit la night i want to tie it up oh shit gritty Johnny Gargano hype is over, sorry folks. I called it a while back, but he's too much of a Daniel Bryan Jr. underdog not believable on main roster. JG was great with Camper in DIY though. I liked NJPW Kushida much better, but that's not a shock. Yeah, because yeah. New Japan made all, all, almost their entire roster stand out individually. Everybody had a, a key motivation story, you know, something about them that, that individualized them. You're not really getting that at this point in NXT. They're just like, oh, this guy's an amazing wrestler, but there's not a lot to, to really know or stand out about them. Even Ciampa, you know, he's amazing. One of my favorites, all times. You know, I said it to Shell earlier in the chat. Him coming out to no theme music and just walking to the ring and hearing the fans rip him apart and boo him. Oh, I miss those times. That was the height of of, of, that, of his uh, career. NXT, absolutely. His, I don't know about NXT, but his career for sure. I feel like NXT was really booming then. Like that was like towards the end of the real like pinnacle. Mm. Yeah, like I liked. I think I liked when. Like when what were they called? Fucking oh my god, I can't remember their names. DIY. Um, n- no, for their tag. When team? um the guys who went to AEW the uh, oh the revival the revival I liked when they were when they were in NXT like that was a yeah, really good time. Revival DIY AOP that's 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 still one of my favorite tag team matches of all time. Yeah, that was a good time. Incredible, no doubt about it. But you we know, could that's probably the thing. do something it's, on that someday about what was the best you know whatever. Re- yeah. It's no it's already gotten to that point where we can actually go back to reviewing classic NXT. I feel like, it, which is weird to say, but yeah, I mean, you figured it's been seven years for some of them, so absolutely. And with Taya Valkyrie, I wonder if she, her name is going to be changed. I haven't heard anything on that yet. But Eli being LA Knight, not thrilled with the LA, but they also uh, hired Harlem Bra- Bravado there from Evolve. Could be just that I hate LA too, so that could be the other thing. Uh, yeah, Anthony Henry. You know, is also signed, so they are really just as, as donators mentioned as well. They're they're trying to scoop up everybody they can. Scoop Vanessa up. Bourne is supposed to be going to the main roster. We'll see what happens there, but I mean, there's just there's a lot going on, right? Well, did you have a good Valentine's Day? Did you did you put the hog in the woman? We had a nice day. I went ahead and I, I made Courtney heart-shaped eggs for breakfast and uh, gave her a nice card and tried to be sweet. And we went to her mom's to celebrate her birthday finally. Oh, so I'm breaking that was the nice. COVID uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Spread the virus. Go get COVID. Okay. Good job. No, Everybody's I, sick. I, um, yeah, man. We just had fun with the kids for a little bit. And uh, I am. It's I, always good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good stuff, man. We had some uh, food. I phoned the kids. 
And I think I think we're going to watch a movie tonight. And I know that tonight's Sunday night gaming, so I will hang around probably and play some games and stuff. But, um, you know, looking at these matches, looking at Balor, I don't know, dude. It's just... It didn't. It just didn't get me tonight, you know. And somebody said, "How can you give this? You know, don't give this a break or whatever. Go after it or whatever." And it's like, well, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to really now do the math in my head of what I really could give everything, you know. And um, why don't you? Do you have the matches in front? I mean, I can pull them up, and it's not hard to yeah. remember. But like, I, I need to have them said to me so I can remember this. Okay. Yeah. Me, the, 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 the first match we had Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez taking on Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. All right. I give that an eight out of ten. I give that an eight out of ten. Yeah, that's fair. That's I'm right there with you. I, I actually might even go eight point five. I didn't I think really like that match compared to other matches that are good. I don't think it was that crazy, but I just think it was a fun match tonight, and it was whatever. But you know, I if I could give it a real score, I'd give it a seven point nine or seven point eight. But I'll give it an eight out of ten. I'll, give, I'll stay at eight. Yeah, the, the Gargano match. I, you know, I'd give that a seven out of ten. Um, what, I'd give that one an eight as well. Uh, wow. That one I was really impressed with. What would you what, and what's after the Gargano? That is the coming up after that. That was the MSK Wesley Nash Carter taking on the Grizzled Young Vets, James Drake and Zach Gibson. Okay, so and I that, felt, of course is when MSK won. I just felt no connection in that match at all. Just didn't care. They did good, and and I'm not going to give it an F, right? Like so, anything below a five for me is a f- complete failure. I don't think it was a failure, but I'd give it a five point five. Like it was. Yeah, I. I I'll never watch I, that I match would, again. See, that's the thing. I, you know, like I, I did enjoy it for a decent amount of time, but then it just soured at the end because it just kept going and going and going, and they, nothing was sold. And I, I'd probably give it a. Well, six. I, you know, I kind of expected that in my pre-show. I said, I, I, Jake, you want to know? I, said, I don't know if you saw my pre-show, but in my pre-show, you know what I said? I said I'm looking. Yeah. I'm looking for this match to be a Young Bucks versus the Young Bucks match. And yeah, you, you go did nuts. go ahead and, and call that, and you pretty much nailed it there. But but they just MSK, didn't hit it. They don't always. I mean, they do have that that spot monkey style. But I figured the Grizzly Young Vets would kind of slow things down. But they kind of tried to keep up with them. It seems so. It was weird. They didn't have any. The chemistry wasn't what I what well, I. That's thought. the thing. The, the, the Grizzled Young Vets tried to step up their style to match what MSK did, so no one met in the middle, and everything felt disjointed because of it. Now they did well putting on you know their best foot forward, but it wasn't anything to you know blow any fans away. I, I don't feel like this is a great look for MSK, as it could have been a really you know knock out of the park moment. Had it been an exemplary match where people were really raving and going nuts, this would have been a real career maker for them. Well, let's let's get the next one. What's the next one? The women's uh, next one is the women's triple threat. I would give yeah. this a five. Oh my god, dude! I can't even. Uh, maybe a four. I give it a four out of ten. Yeah, I can't even. I, that they, they, I, I, I didn't like it at all. There was a couple of spots I did like, and that's the thing. And, yeah. and for me, anything below a four is usually a failure. With you, a five, that seems you know about right too. Our scales are pretty. I'm close. angry at it. I mean, I know that there was a couple moments that I mean to be. Let's be honest. I might actually go back and watch a couple of the moments from that women's match more than the MSK match in a way. So maybe that's hard to say. But just as a complete match, it was shit. They had two. Yeah, there was there was a few good spots. Like I said, uh, Mercedes when she reversed the Storm Zero into that crazy DDT at ringside. That was really good. Obviously, Io Shirai coming down uh, from the light fixture there. That right. was good. Uh, Martinez, again, when she hit the Death Valley driver into the barricade, that looked good. Um, right. But besides that, it, it was basically just you know those big moments, and, and the rest of it fell flat. Okay, so. we got the final match. Uh, Finn Balor um, yes. and Pete Dunne. Unfortunately, the whole match itself I didn't really like, but the last three minutes, it, it like it built well. It did a good job yeah, building. It did build well, but I, I'd go six point five. Yeah, I'd um, I don't know. I um, yeah, I I almost want to give it a seven, but I'd probably give it a six five as well because like I want to give it a seven for the fact that it left me happy, um, but the moment after was really good. So like that's like its own little thing. So, but uh, so I'll go six five as well in the final match, and then I I really loved the ending, and then I loved the L.A. Knight debut, and was there anything else? I don't think so. So, no, you know, that's it. L.A. Knight debuted. Um, well, we also had uh, um, what did I say? Uh, 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 Christ, now I can't think of it. Damn my stupid brain. 
There is something else. I'll think of it in a minute. It'll come to me. But uh, so thirty-one. Okay, divided by five. So that's six six point two. So for everybody out there that's like Joe, how could you give this a six five? Well, I just did the math, and we and we hadn't previously scored anything yet. I just kind of off the top of my head said I think it's a six five, five night. And some people in the chat said you're taking it easy on these guys. Well, I just gave you my scores, and it equals a six point two. And quite frankly. What doesn't factor in are these two things. Loved the ending and loved the L.A. Night debut. So one other thing, commentary. Commentary sucked. Or All right, commentary didn't suck, but wasn't very good. Yes, it was the Cameron Grimes thing. I right, Thank you, Ryan Okay, Sully. I apologize. That's we, where my brain went. So. I didn't yep. love Cameron the Cameron Grimes. Grimes thing, but it was, it was, it was, I was a thumbs I was, up. I'm really high on it right now because I give it a he thumbs up. is very good in the ring and he is really entertaining. Uh he he just he really tries with whatever he's given, and what what the hell was his name in PWG, Tyler something right? I don't remember. Uh, I, I forget, but it, it was amazing in PWG because Cameron Grimes would get people to actually boo him. Like that was something that I often would go ahead and be like, "Wow, that's that's impressive." Because the way PWG was so outlandishly friggin' stupid. Sometimes you know the grenades right. and all that shit. Uh, Trevor Lee, that was it. Oh yeah, Trevor, Trevor Lee. Lee, yeah. And he would he would be able to be that level of a dastardly evil bastard heel to get the smarty smart smartest fans there are, which you know that's what they, that's what went to PWG was the smartest of the smart fans. And uh, thank you, Sir Huggingtons. You know they they would go ahead and they would they would boo him and it worked. So for him to get over essentially against the smart fans like that always impressed me. And yeah. I I thought he had talent back then. He's you know I saw him like 2011 or 12 early, and and then it was quiet for a long time. And uh, I'm I'm glad that he's making a name for himself now. I just I really think that him being rich on you know because of Reddit is hilarious, and I'm glad they're using the gimmick. It's popular, and uh, no, that's the one thing we didn't mention, Ryan, about Dexter Loomis. He kidnapped uh, Austin Theory before Gargano's match. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that I actually appreciated. I'm not crazy about the Dexter Loomis story going on right now with Gargano, but I do like the fact that Gargano was all by himself to get this win. He didn't have any outside help. That was yeah. perfect. That's what he needed. Clean win. One final beat, DDT, in the ring, three count, the crowd can chant Johnny sucks, but he played the ultimate chicken shit heel that actually had to stand up and face what was coming to him and then turn it around into a victory. Excellent. He handled that role and served it really well. So it was it was impressive. Yeah, that was um good call. I, I almost forgot about that even happening. Um but I mean I think this justifies the six five because I love the ending, love the LA Knight debut. And um, then after yeah, all exactly that, where I'm at too, a 32.5 out of 50. So commentary wasn't good. So that drags it down. Grimes thumbs up. So three out of those four extra events, although I didn't put the uh, um, the abduction in there, but the, I'd give the abduction just a, a th you know, it's like a middle thumbs up. So it doesn't change anything either. So I think it justifies all the extracurricular stuff adds to the score. So with me coming up with a 6.2, all the extracurricular stuff adds to the score probably makes it a 6.5 or 6.8. So good good stuff. And so I think that does – I think the my grade is lines up with the scores after you look at it. So that works yeah. out. I'm and glad it does. If you 6.5, you're rounding it to 7. So, I mean, essentially they're still yeah. in, a, in a decent part. But I would say that that's what my rating at is too, is 6.5. So, you know, they just – you know, the commentary in the crowd is a big thing for me. You know, as long as you have – nor I mean, dude, listen, listen, guys. And if you go back to the Attitude Era, it's like this too. In the Attitude Era and and it, and back in any wrestling event, usually if you can get one or two or three matches that are really fun or really good, like that, you're actually great. Because if you look back at things, sometimes there's only one thing or two things that you like. You know, and, and the things thing is, if you get one or two things that are wicked good, even if the other things are kind of crappy or boring or just regular. It's okay because the other stuff is so epic or awesome that like you're like, well, I'll watch that again, and that was cool. So the fact that we got you know one or two decent things tonight was was nice, you know. But again, you we're just used to NXT before the pandemic. 
like hitting on more than one or two things. And then also those one or two things being really good because the crowd is so over for it that you're excited too. Like you, you get, ex you get excited by hearing the crowd excited. And so every move starts to matter. And then the crowd starts to interact with the moves. It's a big thing with NXT. AEW, AEW is about 60% wrestling and 40% the other stuff. You know, NXT is like 90% the wrestling. And I would say WWE, I think WWE is, is similar to AEW where they're like 60-40, but they just don't, the wrestling isn't good usually. So that's the difference. Like WWE, the wrestling is usually bad. And the four, and also the 40% extracurricular stuff is bad. The, the too scripted, all that stuff. That's why it sucks. Whereas AEW, at least sometimes AEW has a, AEW has a better chance of hitting on a, on a promo or a better chance of hitting on a story or a better chance of hitting in the wrestling uh, department than WWE. WWE does wrestling like 60-40, I want to say, or se maybe even 70-30 now, WWE. But they, but they don't hit on anything like AEW does. But NXT does 90% wrestling and, you know, it just gets a little bit, it's not, it's just, even though it's good, it just gets a little bit, I don't know if it's boring or just, there's not enough variety in NXT. That's the thing. NXT is missing a little bit of variety right now that they could really use during the pandemic. Really. I mean, before it wasn't as big a deal because we were like, yeah, they don't quite have the variety the AEW has, but the match is so good and the crowd's so crazy. But without the crowd and without the commentary and like it's really kind of a, I'll tell you what that's what's missing. That's just the, all those things that I mentioned. It, it, that's it is the problem. that's what's missing from all of wrestling. It 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 really is unfortunate, but it it's not their fault. No, I know some people yeah. said that in the chat earlier. No, it's not NXT's fault. It's not AEW's fault. It's the, the pandemic happened, and they but they didn't have to keep going either. They could have done no wrestling. So yes, we're appreciative that they're still trying and that they're still there. But they're not doing it for the fans. They're doing it for themselves. Obviously, it's a money-making business. It's not because they want to entertain us. Maybe maybe the wrestlers do, all, but the corporate doesn't. You said anus. Anus. It's all about us. Honestly, though, you are right. You are 110% correct. That's Am what I? it comes down to is the lack of fans not putting over stories that keep people coming back for more. I mean, tomorrow night is raw. Is there any reason to tune in? Honestly, there, there's. Is there any continuation from last week? Is there anything that I'm forgetting that I I can't I didn't think of that we need to like? No, there's nothing. Like I have to see this. There's no longer that must see feeling. No, yeah, That's not bad. at all. In and fact, the elimination chamber is this coming fucking I dread, Sunday. I dread tomorrow. Exactly. Dread Who wants to be watching Raw at this point? Oh God! The elimination dude. chamber is Sunday. Roman Reigns is not competing in the chamber because he doesn't feel like it, and I believe that. You know, funny enough, but uh, you know, protect the guy. That's fine. They're going to do a number one contenders match. No women's chamber. All right, fine. The women's chamber wasn't good last year, but that's because it was booked poorly. A women's chamber can be done well. You have enough participants on SmackDown. Why not introduce Rhea Ripley there? Those are idiots. Exactly. Instead, we got to deal with my hole. <laughs> yeah. tomorrow night so we'll see what happens and how many times she says that it's like when uh titus fell and yep. then they had to t you know that was the greatest botch ever literally the greatest ever him tripping and sliding so perfect under the ring he didn't get hurt amazing how he landed his perfect slide all of it and then they had to try and merchandise it titus world slide and they had him falling all the time and they ruined it well, they're going to yeah. do the same thing with Nia's hole. They're going to do the same thing with it, it's. They have to ruin these things. Anytime well, because they get something that works, they got to ruin it. They should have let the fans decide that. Like if the so if the fans if the fans are on Raw cheering like Titus World Slide, Titus World Slide, or like Titus like whatever they come up with like, and the fans start like say you you know that like come up with a gimmick where people can repeat it and Titus goes. Everybody saw my Titus World Slide last night. All right, get it, get it all out. Laugh it up. You know, it was funny, I guess. All right. And then somebody comes on and goes, yeah, you took the whole damn, you know, you took all the focus off a match with your stoop because you're a moron. That's all people are talking about in the back. Even the boss loves it. Now the boss is going around telling everybody, you know what I did last night? And then you put him against somebody. And then maybe the fans start chanting that. Then you release the T-shirt. You don't just release the T-shirt because, like, oh, and it's like now you killed it. You just killed it. You're so, you literally didn't even give it a chance to breathe. 
or give a chance for that to happen. You just fucking took it all away. It's like they don't even know. It's like, don't you know how to build something? You could literally build this. We do it all the time on my show with guys like Bullfrog or other people. Something happens and then it turns into a fucking giant thing or a meme or a, eventually exactly. a donation. It's like, dude, it, it writes itself. But instead, that's as, why I was hoping Bullfrog won the title. But you know, but as it's writing itself, you just you. It's like you just take the whole fucking thing, and before and it finishes, you fucking hit the punchline. They line, scrap it, yeah, or you kick the book over, or whatever. It's like exactly. They just they're like, oh, you guys wrote this for us, and it's great. Well, we're gonna burn it and start over. But thank you for doing all that work. That was really nice. Yeah, the, my whole thing, like, wait to see what happens. Our fan, you know, and I guess now the only thing is now I can understand a little bit. There's no fans. So, like, I mean, you know, you got nothing to go on. Whether they're going to chant my whole to her. Because, dude, if, we're, if we're, like, if the fans were there. We might not have even heard her. Dude, they might have been chanting my whole. Yeah, but we might not have heard her. Right. even heard her. That's a good point. Because it would have been so much noise, you know. That's the I thing think you, we forget about. I think you would have heard that. I really, I, I'm I sure we would do. have because she was so obnoxiously loud. Yeah. No doubt. My whole. I'm telling you, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't hear that we've been picking up on, which it yeah. sometimes is enjoyable, but it has to be like Bailey's really good at it. Roman's good at talking during matches and, you know, making it feel interesting. He starts a dialogue, but you can't do it all the time. And it, 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 those two are good at it, but most people aren't. So it's an acquired you Did know you taste. But I know, but Joe? I don't mind it. Did you just donate to Joe? Oh, there's Dwayne the Cock Johnson. Thank you for the donation. And because the one and only. you donated, I'm going to feast myself. Go ahead. In the bunghole. Three dollars coming in from Dwayne the Cock. <laughs> Dwayne the Cock Johnson tipped three dollars. WWE is going to get sued. Apparently, Ellen Knight is a fictitious NBA team in the movie, like Mike starring Bow Wow. And yeah. funny enough, WWE has expressed interest in signing him. Yeah, Bow Wow is going to have to stick up for them now. Now Bow Wow is going to be like, if you sign me, I'll get my buddy to not sue you. You know, like now now Bow Wow is going to use this as a reason to get signed by WWE. The son of a bitch. Yeah, but uh, you know that's funny. Ah, uh, yeah. It comes Fade to Black. Smoke weed every day. Thank you, Fade to Black. Disagree, Grizz Vets, Wilson, and Kschuk. Gibson gets heat with fans' shoes off if you hate Zach Gibson. Problem is MSK are just spot monkeys and Grizz Vets do better with a team like Mustache Mountain. You might be right, yeah. I mean, Fade to Black, it's a good point. I mean, I will admit to you, Fade to Black, that I'm pretty ignorant on them. But I just saw what I saw. I just I couldn't have cared about either one of them. But definitely the rookies didn't help for sure. I, I get that they're they are you know they had to be made tonight too because the other guys yeah, were made. They already. had to make them. You know, like you said, they they were the new big stars. Yeah, or no, yeah. they were the new up and coming wrestlers. They're not big stars. Well, the, the new ones to become shit big stars. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, that's never you become good. They they say that they ain't gonna be them. Joe Jake, who is your favorite NXT wrestler? Probably Adam Cole. Uh, Finn Balor is kind of a cheat answer because he left and came back. So if it wasn't Balor, I can't Tomasa stand Ciampa. Balor. I hate Balor. I know you do. You you've never been a Balor fan. I can't. I hate his matches. Everything is the same thing. Can't stand it. He's fucking shit bomb. Oh, I can't stand it. You become. A shit bomb. Corwin Eberly, long time. Wrestling was great, but the show seemed uneventful. Yeah, I mean... Until the ending, yeah. yeah. And it's supposed to be a huge impact in, in this amazing big thing because the first women's Dusty Classic winners who are going on to face the women's tag champs, essentially that, that should be a very big deal. It's not because they've flubbed those titles so poorly, you know, and they've handled them so piss poor and... They've ruined. I mean, there's no acclaim to those women tag titles, so you become. It's not special. It should be though. Thank you, JCS Foot Rub. Uh, that was the last one uh, we had to play. Oh, so yeah, thank you, rub. man. But yeah, those tag titles should be special for the women's side of things. So everyone should be like, "Oh my God, they're going to face the women's tag titles." That's a huge opportunity for these NXT women. Instead, it just feels like, all right, they won. They're going to face Nia. They'll probably win. Whatever. It just doesn't have that same. You know, because Nia's not a, a great defending champ. Same thing with Shayna Baszler. They're not a believable team and all the comedy bullshit. And it's just, uh, it's it's awful. So already I'm not interested in this angle. And then you're trying to put over MSK. And I felt like this wasn't the, the best way to do so. 
Yeah, I felt they weren't that nobody. They weren't ready for the, the, that matchup. Was terrible because, like I said, I just didn't think either team was very good. And so, whatever. Yeah. Like, and he's not wrong. I mean, Chris Young vets were better in NXT UK. I'm not sure how much you've seen of them, but yeah, I'm uh, sure they were. But I'd still give. I, like, like I said, I'd give the grizzled Young vets if I said that they're a seven out of ten team. Well, they just faced MSK, who I think right now is like a fucking five out of ten team. Although their promo was great, I won't. I I want to say the one. I don't want to say something bad, not say something good. But something good is that they're really athletic. They were nailing moves that were crazy, and and they had a great promo or a pretty good promo to start the show. But other than that, the the, the chemistry in the match was dead. Like it's, it's almost like well, that's the thing. Do you, you know can when, nail um, a bunch of big moves, but it looks like Cirque du Soleil, not wrestling. Yeah, exactly. It looks stupid. Uh, do you know Madden or like NHL when you're playing the video game? Um, one one of the options is hit Y and just put together the best overall team. So when you hit Y, your team gets a 90 overall, and you get all just whoever has the best overall goes out there. Um, and it's like okay, whatever. But there's also an option for best chemistry. And when you put best chemistry out there, sometimes you actually do better because the, it, it creates this chemistry in the game. I don't know. It's some kind of in-game technique. But the fact of the matter is it was – this reminded me of just putting the best overall thing out there. You, you, you go out there and you, you nail all these high-end moves. And you do all the high-end moves, the craziest moves. You do – you're fast. You, you say the right things. But then the match just – like none of the chemistry ever churns at all in the match. It's just fucking stuff happening left and right for the sake of stuff happening. And that just equals nothing to me, and that's why I give that such a a bad – it doesn't mean that the, – it doesn't mean that one these two teams could wrestle somebody else tomorrow and we can end up saying, damn, that was a damn good match. Uh, of course. Like it's just th – what we saw tonight, they didn't click at all. It, it, they, they clicked as far as executing moves. Yeah, but anybody, you know, essentially could do that, but they, they didn't have the believability there that was needed. They didn't possess any of that pizzazz that makes them stand out and no, feel they, special. Yeah, well, uh, to me, they did have pizzazz. They just didn't have any fucking wrestling chemistry. Like, I, I, there was See, no... See, that to me, that that's the pizzazz that I'm looking for, that, that special something that makes you stand out. And I, I feel like anybody can do flips and kicks, but they make it look like, you know, it's, it's cheerleading. You're doing spot work. You're not, you know, it's all in unison you're working together it's teamwork you're not fighting it's not wrestling it, yeah it doesn't look I felt, believable it felt like a mockery of wrestling i'll be honest yes i i know wrestling is fake obviously I, not stupid but don't make it look fake yeah it didn't it looked like stupid it looked dude it looked like make it feel believable i think it was Cornette's worst nightmare uh, i am i imagine he would have a heart attack in this match if he hasn't done so already with the other you know young bucks tag matches that have happened so mm, yeah i mean he i don't think he's gonna flip out because he kind of blows nxt a little bit but uh you know, not not really not lately really he's been yeah he's been hating nxt too and saying how they've had nothing and they've been rather boring and he's fast forwarded through a lot of the women's matches so mm, he's gonna be mad then tonight because i'm telling you what i was mad he'll skip through the women's match i guarantee it i'm telling you what i just went full Damn southern it, I went full southern, baby. Um, <laughs> I'm worried about the Sammy thing. I hope it's. I hope it is a story. I I truly believe in my heart of hearts that it's fake. It just to me sounds and screams work. I mean, hearing who's confirmed it first, and then the way Fightful said the way it just it seems em. like yeah, it seems so odd. It's I I especially because Sammy just left the inner circle, and then hearing Jericho publicly say that he would have him suggestively banned from Impact. Why would Jericho want that kind of heat when Sammy's so well liked by the fans? And uh, I don't know. I I think it's fake. I think it's bullshit. I think it's going to lead into the story that's going on with the inner circle stuff. Because Jericho originally said that he saw what happened on TV between him and MJF. So MJF had some explaining to do, Lucy. But we'll yeah. see what happens Wednesday. But see, that's something to look forward to. That's something we have that we don't know the outcome of. For Raw, there is nothing that I'm interested in. I don't care that Alexa Bliss turns into a, a younger version of herself and torments Randy Orton because it's not interesting at this point. There's no one for Drew to face. He's got to go into the chamber against all of these supposed-to-be ready-made opponents, but no one's there, so you know he'll win and head to Mania. So that takes the interest out of that fight. So what's the point of Dude, watching? Psycho Kaz in the chat goes, Sammy's going to SmackDown to look for Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> Shit bomb. Get his rape on. Welsh. 
Known as the guy who suckered in Bullfrog and then screwed him over. Woo! The face of the people. Yeah. Play the screw over clip, Joe. Jesus. Welsh can't get enough of this shit. Play the clip over. Play it again. Play the clip, Joe. Play the clip. Play it again. Please play it. Play it again. Play it when I screwed him. Play it when I play it. Play it. Play it. All right, here He's we proud go. of himself. Good Lord. I got to fucking look it up. Play the clip. Play it up. Play it in. Play it up. And in Bullfrog. Proud Bullfrog is fucking. <laughs> Where is the clip? Can you timestamp it at least when you donate? It should be timestamped in the uh, of this show. Oh, this must be it. Yeah, so Bullfrog thought he was going to win. Can we not talk had, uh... about the forbidden door being open now? Finjuice on impact and Meltzer reporting that her card could show up on impact or AA depending of travel restrictions with other NJPW stars. Okay. NJPW yeah. also Ed Mox slash Kenta match on website. Yeah, I don't they, even... they did host the Kenta match from AEW on the New Japan site because they're promoting New Japan Strong to put over the IWGP US title match that Kenta is having with Moxley. Again, that's that's mutually beneficial, but I heard the same report where Meltzer was saying that Okada's coming. If that's genuinely true, great for AEW, but we'll see what happens with it. Okada's just going to come and face Jericho again. Now, like they said, it'd be an interesting match, but they'd have to build it up right. Not much sense in it right now. So yeah, hopefully they handle this right and they don't do what WWE did with their invasion and fuck it up and just bring over people for, hey, look, they're here now. Who's knocking on the forbidden door today? It's... Uh, you know, you know, I don't want to see it like that. I, I hopefully it makes sense and it's a, it's a practical reason. I know they also said that COVID plays a big part, makes sense, travels a nightmare, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully they have good stories though. If, if Okada does come, good for AEW. I just don't know if it's going to make a difference here with fans. Like CM Punk would, would get people that haven't watched wrestling in years to tune in. But I don't know if any New Japan star would really get anyone in the United States to tune into wrestling that isn't already watching or know who they are. I really, I, I don't see Okada or even Jay White or anybody, anybody, Tanahashi being the one to really add a huge influx of ratings. If Sting and other people like that couldn't do it to get them over a million, I don't think anyone on the New Japan side is going to be able to. I don't think there's New Japan fans that aren't watching AEW. I mean... Really. I, again, I don't, I don't think that, I, I just don't, I, maybe it's me, I mean, maybe I'm a sour fuck, but I just don't care, I, 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 I actually dreaded this, I don't know if you noticed this, but I avoid talking about the, the weird fucking crossover, I, I, I'm actually gonna, you guys have done it to me finally, I don't give a fuck. I'm so sick of the crossover talk, for like years of the crossover talk, stop it. I just want to watch the fucking show. And it's the same as like, oh my God, who's going to come up from NXT? Like, I don't give a fuck because it's going to suck. Yeah, and you don't I want don't them to care. come up anymore. We, I don't, we don't care. We don't want to see them. Crossover to fucking Impact, crossover to AEW, Janu Japan, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I, I'm going to watch AEW. I'm not watching New Japan anymore. All right, go hire Kevin Kelly to sit on his ball sack. Impact Wrestling is fucking weird. Um, I don't talk about them anymore. I hate them actually. Um, they. Yeah, I, I won't don't, watch. I, I don't like, care. I watch the pay per view live. I'll, I'll I'll see highlights and stuff. But yeah, no. So I, I just have no interest you, in you can say like, oh, what if this guy comes? The other guy comes. Great. If they come, I'll see what happens when they get here. Like right now, I don't give a shit. Uh, so that's that's really what it is, man. I, yeah, that's I my opinion it. too, and it sounds kind of like pretentious but that's not how i mean it to sound i just i'm I, we've gotten our hopes up so many times before and have been let down but about so what just, like about what like what's the hopes up about with it. some guy comes in like who but i don't give a fuck it will it's either good or it isn't good let me know when it's on tv like kenta the other day kenta showed up cool he showed up and he delivered a terrible gts and looked horrible and yeah but it was fun it was that embarrassingly he, bad but it was fun that he was here so i was like oh cool kenta's here so that's cool and then he had a match in the end of aew that wasn't very good so yeah, so but but everyone's yeah, like, oh my god, Kent is here! Oh my god, he's here! Oh, like great, he was here and he was like not the best thing on the show last week. Who fucking cares? He can't, you know. It's like okay, cool, like he yay, like he's here, like he's like not the best thing on the show. 
He's not yeah, going to put. What, he's right, not going to get ratings. Cool. The ratings aren't going to go up. I mean, I'm not mad that he's here, but I'm just not overly excited either. Well, that's why well, I said, who could they bring over that that or bring in that isn't already hired elsewhere? You know, that's the thing. There, with NWA circling the drain, essentially, we'll see what happens there. But even that, you know, I, I'm not sure who they have left that they they don't have ties to other already you know wrestling associations. So. I like the Japanese wrestlers in Japan, in and in, in New Japan. I, I like Okada, obviously at Wrestle Kingdom. I mean, my God, there was some great matches. But again, it only goes so far for me. After after about three New Japan matches, I start usually zoning out. Like I'm like, okay, but I love what I see usually. It's just that I just I can't. It's, you get burnt out on a 50 yeah, minute match. Three matches and I'm done. About two or three matches and I'm done with New Japan. I'm like, okay, I gotta I gotta walk away for a little bit. I'll, I'll see. You later. Yeah, you get a 60 minute no finish or a you know 50 minute bell to bell where it ends up being you know they, they kill each other and it's all false finishes there's but then there's also those real competitive matches like you said at wrestle kingdoms where yeah. you get those six star matches so remember when um oh god goes both ways who was it he had a fucking brawl with somebody a couple of years ago in fact i called i called i did commentary over it and it was probably on my old twitter account so it's probably gone now but i did commentary over it for fun just because yeah. but i watched that match and oh my god, dude! It was just fucking. It was awesome. It was fucking brutal, and I loved it. It was just so fun, man. It was a strong style type of thing, and it felt so real and exciting. Um, don't remember now what match it was. I want. I almost wonder if it was Kenny Omega and Ishii. Is it Ishii or Ishii? Oh god, what's his name? Ishii. Or- yeah, it's Ishii or something like that. It was him and I think and somebody else. And it was just like I was like that match was fucking awesome. You know, and then they had another match that was good, but by the time we got to the end, it's it's almost like after a few matches on New Japan, I start feeling like the Triple H Jericho main event on WrestleMania where I'm like I kind of don't care right now. So because there, there's not enough like stuff so it's like that that's why the the year where jericho faced omega was so good because i got to see a bunch of good matches before and i really enjoyed them and they were knocked down drag out matches a lot of exciting stuff happened but then there was a main event that i was really invested in that i was like that, that felt like more because of the american influence in it and and, and that that style was building and so you know i really got excited that night because I saw, you know, like eight matches before that were so fun and I was waiting for that main event or whatever. Toby Mosby versus uh Tomohiro Ishii, was that it? Tomohiro, yes. Yeah, Tomohiro Ishii. Yeah. Tomohiro Ishii, yes. I'm always terrible at names, but yeah, um that was Ed's view and uh a few others in the chat Ed's, chiming in with that. So. Ed's view would know because obviously he's Japanese. What's up Ed's view? It's it's it, Ishii his name is pronounced like that, though, right? It's not. It's not Ishi. It's Ishii. It's Ishii. Like Ishii. Yeah, Ishii. Ishii. It's, it's I, yeah. I, I, like I said, terrible with names. Pretty sure there's like a another syllable there that. Shit bomb. You become. I'm still looking for a it. Shit bomb. Yo, uh, JCS Foot Rub, man. Thanks for the dollar again, man. Thank you guys for funding the show and for the donations tonight, man. So obviously, uh, I appreciate it, man. It's been a rough month. Thanks to all the people who re-signed up on Patreon. Um, I don't know, you know, we love doing this. I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do all these shows like I do and how much longer, um, you know, we'll be here and what stuff is going to go on to Patreon and stuff like that. But, uh, for right now we're still here doing it and I, I appreciate the, a good group of you guys wanting to keep the shows on the air and keep, keep everything floating. So, you know, not to get weird somber, but thank you for the support. Um, fuck, yeah, I can't, you know, find it. You know, I want to know something really sad. New England All-Star Wrestling, the company that I uh, do commentary for, or that I did do commentary for, um, they're, they're done because of, really? COVID, because of COVID. They're trying, to, they're trying to sell the ring. That stinks. I know a few uh, local mm-hmm. independents up here that were really small. There was one school. Look at this ring. Two, What's like, up, wrestling uh, fans? We are live. Things, and they, they had a closed shop. So, Dude, look at this ring. They bought this brand new ring, and they had all these shows set up. They worked months to get this gig at Penn's, the mall, 
and they had a great setup, great look, professional setup. The guy that ran this does TV and stuff. Yeah, this looks fantastic. So. I mean, oh, I had a ringside seat. Rex Lawless wreaking havoc here at New England All Star Wrestling. Look at how beautiful this is. Few months. They packed the place pretty well, and we done. I, I've only done two shows with them, and I found out today that they're done. So Joe Cronin, that's a good, you know, it, it's got good switching so far back and forth. The entrance looks solid, good lighting. And this was just the, this was sort of the beginning of like, they didn't, you know, they, they were going to learn from this, this, this one, you know I mean? They're, they learned, yeah. this is the second show. They're going to learn from it. And you know, this was my last company that I was working for in real life. You know, now I'm doing commentary digitally for people virtually, but you know, this was the one place I was looking forward to going back in real in person and now that's gone, man. So like, I'm really out of talk about being out of a job. I'm, I'm out of a real job, man. This was gonna be fun. So goodbye. Look at how nice the ring is. Oh, what a drop kick! Still couldn't take Wallace off his feet, though. Look at this ring. Like it was phenomenal. Alberta missed All Star Wrestling. Something like that. Oh my! Look at this big guy. Look at the ring. It's so clean. So, rest. In, I mean, I, I suppose they're going out of business. I'm not 100% sure on that exactly. I asked him, but he didn't respond yet. But he's trying to sell everything. And then I saw them say, you know, ring for rent or uh, to per and someone said, to, is it to buy or to rent? And the guy was like, both. And I was like, whoa. God damn. Helen, we'll take it. And you and I could turn it into a gay porn ring. <laughs> yeah, you guys want to buy me the ring? I'll put it in my basement. Well, if everybody buys the ring, we know Lars Sullivan isn't doing anything right now. So he'll be yeah. our main attraction. Dude, oh my God. Imagine if... <laughs> now, I don't know about that ring because it's really big, but what I was thinking about one day, and I'm not even kidding about this, dude, I thought about if I could get a ring, and I mean one of the small rings that's made for the low ceiling buildings, get one of those tiny small rings. For, like I, a $1,200 one. I, yeah. I could put it in my basement, right here in my basement, and then we, we, we get a hold of Lars Sullivan, and, and I bring Lars Sullivan to my house to rape Leah. Now, uh, to, so he can do an interview with us, and we do a shoot interview with Lars Sullivan. And then in the shoot interview, he gets angry. And then we shoot an angle where we get in the ring and he just kills me. And it'd be fucking hilarious. And nobody would ever have anything like that. It'd be amazing. So anybody out there who's an investor or has money, if you buy me a ring for uh, $2,000, I will uh, I'll pay you back the money. <laughs> no, I won't actually. I'm, I'll I'm make some out. content. <laughs> no, I won't. But yeah, make we'll some make some content. we'll make some crazy content. But you're gonna have to hit me up if you're rich, um, and we're gonna have to get somebody to get Lars or to get somebody. I think it'd be a lot of fun, and uh, I mean it'll be really loud. Uh, my dream match: the two nobody's doing anything right now. Lars versus Ryback. We get them both. They're yes. GCS history in the making. Uh -huh. Think about that match. We've yeah. got history with both men. We can get a tag match going on after, but that would you be and me even. versus uh, you know Ryback and Lars could be excellent. Mm, it could be really fun. It could be really fun. Man, it could be so fun. It could be uh it could be tasty. I listen, the thing about Ryback is he would never do anything like that cuz he's he doesn't care. He doesn't understand this. Yeah, stuff. he doesn't want to be funny with the internet. He he yeah. wants to just think his shit doesn't stink. He just wants to be like I'm He never shit. cared about the fans. There were so many opportunities, not even just with our community or your show as he had to right wrongs, but in other times where, you know, no one likes him. There's a reason yeah. for it. Look at how, you know, there's so much disdain for his name that's, you know, it's synonymous with Ryback. So much hate and vitriol because of who he is and how he carries himself. Yeah, because, I mean, listen, I, would, I wouldn't keep, I don't, I mean, you brought it up, but I mean, the guy is, the guy is a mess. I mean, to well, be, think about it, because you could have a great time, you know, doing something like that. Oh, mm -hmm. it's the COVID time. We could raise money for charity. Oh, let's have Lars versus Ryback. Oh, that would be a hell of a match. Two big guys, ex, you know, formerly known as in WWE, and mm -hmm. they do it for the fans. And hell yeah, but you'd have to be a lot of money. We might have to offer him at least ten thousand dollars. Oh, there he is. It has to be at least ten thousand. Doing it for free, it's a charity. Sir Huggington's tip four dollars. Keep it up, good brothers. Hell yeah! Thank you, Sir Huggington's. Good to hear from you. And shout out to Shell for the top donation, twenty-one dollars. 
the top dog tonight so far. Sir Huggingtons, thank you for the $4, man. Good to hear from you, brother. Yeah, it'd be my one and only wrestling match. Ryback would stick his fist at my ass, Lars would make me swallow, and I'd tap out. Ooh. That'd be it. <laughs> man, I'm going to f- explode Friday night, man. I'm, I am I, I can't stop talking about it, Jake. I'm such a dork. I can't wait for fucking Diablo BlizzCon Friday. I can't I stop it, man. I'm going to freak out. You Diablo f- 4, look at all these years in the making. We're finally going to get something. Well, uh, I, I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to do it after the show, but I know we got the, the new uh, trailer for the Snyder Cut as well. People I, are saying yeah. that that looks excellent. I saw it, but it's it's just the same movie with extra shit. You know what I mean? And, I, and, it, and I didn't hate cut Justice by League. Snyder. I know a lot of people really hated that movie. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. It could have been so much better. I was disappointed, Yeah, granted. But apparently the people that have seen this already before it was finished said it was really damn good. I mean, it's four hours long, so... Something's got to be decent if they cut all this shit and people went nuts over it. So, got to be something there. What is this? What is Superman and Lois? They're coming out with a show called Superman and Lois? Really? Hmm. No, the the women are going to be mad that it says Ann Lois. Oh, wait a minute. Ann Lois. Yeah, no, they're... Yeah, Superman and Lois. They're the adventures of Lois and Clark, so... Didn't they do that with Dean Cain? They did that. Yes. They did. Great show. Corny as it was. It was it was silly. It was but corny, it was but good. it was good. Yeah, it was good. Oh yeah, here it is. It's really true. Severe anxiety. Parents. It's a movie? You got the weight of the world on your shoulders. I really wish I could get drunk sometimes. You're saying you're Superman? Well, we've seen Superman before. We've seen him. Wow. Okay, whatever. Um, I've, I've, I've seen <laughs> it's gonna be on the CW. Oh God! Well, wasn't that where that's Lois where, and Clark was? Yeah, that's where uh, Smallville was. Not Lois yeah. And so Clark. they've been. I don't doing think this. Lois and Clark was on there. I thought they were on. It was on either UPN. CW or WB. One of the two. I thought it was UPN then, but whatever. I mean, were, one of those that was reruns. Here's the thing: Superman is so overdone. Like, basically, I'm done with Superman. I'm done with um. I'm done with superhero movies. I'm done with superhero movies. X Men really got bad at the end when they had a new good cast that I loved, and then those yeah last, the the like they ruined the it. First class one was really good. And yep, and the next one was the best. Like I loved that yeah. movie. I loved that movie, dude. Are you kidding me? Days of Future oh, Past. Oh my god, dude! And and I love Patrick Stewart too. And and it they did the Wolverine crippled shit, and like it was so good. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that one. They did a bunch of good shit, and then it died after that. And then the new X Men mutant things that all suck. Yeah, they um, started going through time travel and SJWs everywhere now and everything. Um, the er- Phoenix saga they retold. I didn't even watch. I didn't have the heart for it. The DC it stuff awful. is like all six out of ten stuff now to me, and. The Marvel stuff is all going to be overdone. Like, I'm done. Get me out. I'm the outlier, done. but I hated the way the Avengers ended. You know, I, I really liked everything up until, what was it, the last one, Endgame? The time travel aspect in that one just ruined it for me. I know we reviewed it when it came out then, but. You know, I thought. There were so many plot holes and things that didn't work. It was just maddening. I think it would have been nice if they did the time travel thing for like a few minutes, like almost as a side thing. Do you know what I mean? Like they had to get a. And I don't remember the movie now. I got to go. In fact. I'm glad you brought this up because I'm going to go back and watch those two movies now because they were good. And I'm not a big Marvel. I'm not a big, not I like Marvel, but I'm not a big, uh, you know, like, I like X-Men. Like, mar- when I think of Marvel, X-Men is my thing. Everything else, I don't really like it. So, yeah, you weren't thinking about, like, you know, uh, but Civil War, Justice League, I, Iron Man, that kind of stuff. I think, like, yeah. a quick little McGovern hunt on time travel would have been good. But it was so focused on the time travel. I think I think the McGovern. Well, well they had their, you know five hundred McGovern's, but they couldn't go ahead and, and yeah, you know, it, they couldn't keep the story straight because they, they it was like so many things was just so hypocritical. So I I basically they would say one thing and then they they'd contradict themselves with getting the stones or changing the stones or you know using them to alter time. But there's different oh there's different timelines. Well, it, it just I think it's I don't time, Jake. Too many plot holes. I think I'm finally gonna do. You know, I've spent the last uh, 15 years or so, you know, on YouTube really enjoying, you know, review channels that go back and watch the old movies that we love and reviewing stuff that we love. So I think, I think basically what I'm going to try to do for the next few years 
really hard is I'm going to try to pull out every movie that I ever loved and every old movie and I'm going to go back and I'm going to try to watch movies that I missed from the 80s or 90s or earlier uh, 50s even 60s 70s and I'm going to try to watch all the movies I love and I'm going to try to talk about them in reviews and stuff like that and I'm going to really probably not watch a lot of current stuff because if there was ever a time to take a break from current movies and culture this is the time because what this is the most horrific shit ever and I'm really concerned because every time I get excited every time oh oh Star Wars can't wait you know oh they it's just fucking SJW shit oh oh Mandalorian I love I actually like it guys oh SJW fire the girl from the show okay um, Star Trek. It's the same thing with The Flash. Danny and I used to watch The Flash, and she uh-huh. brought it up to me. She's, I was like, you don't want to watch The Flash? She's like, no, I don't want to watch it anymore. I'm like, why not? She's like, it just got really boring and dumb. And I'm like, well, I hear you there, but what specifically don't you like? And she's like, well, they made The Flash just look stupid. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, well, his girlfriend had to become more powerful than he was. And this is her saying it. She picked up on it. You yep. know? But they really did. They had to embarrass the superhero so that his girlfriend can go ahead and... and inherit his powers and then he had to you know be the the idiot sidekick and she was suddenly the the you know the the most important role on the show but as where he had to learn how to control his powers and you know that was a whole season's arc she was instantly the best ever because i'm female hear me roar they had to do that arc yeah. of it and they made him look like an idiot the whole time and from there it was even it was bad to begin with but at that point it just got exponentially worse so yeah even leah who like when I'm like look at how bad Antifa is like she's like I don't care they're probably a Trump supporter <laughs> even Leah <laughs> even Leah is like I can't watch these shows she's like I she's like and she used to say too like I think you're kind of crazy and I'm like I swear to God I'm not crazy and even she is like oh God she just rolls her eyes but she doesn't get hung up like I do on the whole like this is the agenda she just kind of like looks at it one by one and, and goes yeah that's not good because of this. But I'm like, but don't you see why the because of this is happening? She doesn't. Yeah, care I don't want to get that. you on a roll, but I mean, we know yeah, we've yeah. gone over it a thousand times. But Star Wars, you know how badly <laughs> that was ruined. And- but it's like, it's like, um, what else do we have coming up? So it's like Star Trek is dead too. Like that's a mess. It's like I try to watch Star Trek. It's like I watched Discovery, and Leah stopped watching it, and then I started watching Picard, and then Leah goes, okay, fine, I'll watch Picard. But I had to drag Leah. To watch Picard because she was like after what I saw in Discovery I don't even know but then we watched the first episode of Picard and we both both said the same thing like we were both like okay th- this is kind of cool and then but in the second episode we were like oh and then in the third <laughs> episode and dude by the third or fourth episode we were like oh my god and Leah stopped watching at the in the yeah. sixth episode of Picard she stopped she said fucking she, she was done and my wife is more like liberal than me left leaning very like and yeah, she was she, like no nope, i'm done i she's like fuck she goes fuck this show and yeah, i she, and i watched it in her watching like she doesn't things don't usually bother her to that extent you i know, know exactly wrapped up in it if i couldn't um, deal with it because i'm like dude the fucking i mean not to spoil some things i won't but i mean there is one girl on the show literally is a murderer and then at the end like they're just like oh well and then like i can't wait till next season basically and it's like what you're a this person's a fucking murderer now they're on the crew and they're great they like they like blamed the guy for it like it was it, like, they did that shit with all the what? cw shows with arrow they did it with obviously the, i i didn't watch any of the batwoman or batgirl show that they had there but apparently people said it was horrifically bad uh, they they did it, you know, because Arrow was good in the beginning, and it just progressively got worse. They did the same thing with the Flash, and is that the one with Catwoman too, or Batwoman? I'm a woman. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, the bat suit is Bat-shit. is literally perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> you gotta get that guitar squeal. Yeah, fucking. Yeah, <laughs> oh man, the ratings on a that show. Echo behind it. Oh my god, the the ratings on that show, dude. Oh, they're so bad, and it's deservedly so. I don't want the show to Ugh. fail. I I, I do. I do. I don't want. That. Well, no, I, <laughs> in the sense of like you know, oh, it's because she's blood. No, that has nothing to do with it. Right? You wrote and produced and created a piss poor bad show. That's why. Hit That's me with hit me with the down. hit me with the audio. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. <laughs> 
Every time that gets me. Oh my god, you're fucking retard idiots. Like, oh my god. It will be. When it fits a woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Unleash your inner bitch today. I'm a woman. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. It's pathetically terrible. Yeah, Batwoman was the villain. That's how it seemed. Man, I I, I I'm ready like I'm ready to like I, I like assassinate me from this world, bro. I, I don't know if I can live in this world anymore. What uh, Randy T V, thank you for subscribing to the channel, man. Randy TV subscribed, thank you. I said it earlier today, actually. The literal quote was, I, I'm just baffled how... I, I know this sounds ridiculous in some sense. Be like, oh, people are sheep. Or pe you know, but there's so many just moronic people out there that, that blindly shit follow and, and listen to everything. Yeah, how did, yeah. When did all this change? Oh, shit bomb. I don't know. Joe, Jake, what is your favorite Marvel movie? What's the first... What's Oh, man. What's the... Oh, man. I don't know. It's... Yeah. I don't know. You go ahead, Jake. I don't know. I, it's, it's either... Uh, I, you know, it's like the first... I, um, yeah, the first Iron Man I liked. Yeah, I could tell you the ones um, I really like. Like first Iron Man, and I do like the End Game, the two, the two, whatever the first Avengers one is, the one where every, the snap one. I uh, yeah, the I like I like Doctor Strange. I like the first Iron Man. I even like the first Thor, and I like it. Is X Men Marvel still? Yeah, they're Marvel. So the I liked First Class. And I liked the uh, second my, one. My favorite would probably be Captain America. It's the the second one. The uh -huh. was it the, the Winter Soldier one, or that's like a spy heist kind of you know, yeah. movie. Yeah, we all packed like that was excellent. I hear a lot of people you, say that's like one of their best ones. I, I did actually you see don't, that one. I, yeah, I don't like it. Like like everybody, I don't know why. I got bored of it. I don't know. I don't know why. I have no idea. I I got bored. I turned it off, and which is I mean, weird. Everybody has their own taste. I mean, it had like a Mission Impossible feel to it as well. I mean, so it kind of almost a few boxes. I wonder if I got to watch it again because like Leah loved it, and I'm like Guardians hmm. of the Galaxy was good. You know, had some good comedy. Yeah, I don't think Guardians is like the best thing ever, but it was fun to watch. It was nice. It was. I didn't care for the second one much, but the first one was a yeah, standout. Second one was weird. It was t it was a typical second type of movie actually, but it was yeah. like it was like. It was okay, but it was weird. I I I more was excited that hey Kurt Russell, because <laughs> Kurt, <laughs> Kurt Russell kills me. Like I love Kurt Russell as a bad guy is the best. I love him when he's a bad guy, and I love uh or when he's weird or whatever in a movie, just whatever. He's just fucking. I love Kurt Russell. Um, oh we got don't know. Let me see here. What we got Parker. The fuck cancel culture shit. Why is it still playing the three dollar? <laughs> Why is it doing that? That's driving me nuts. That's not even the donation that shows. Why is that happening? Parker tipped three dollars. Joe, I am listening back to Corrupted from last night. I am dying laughing. Go <laughs> to the YouTube video of the podcast. I time stamped it in the comment section at 1 hour 13 minutes 26 seconds. Drew says something horrific. Oh, boy. You should oh, clip God. it. Ha ha. Probably, probably, probably shouldn't play it on the show then if he says something horrific because it's probably going to fucking be hor horrible. Uh, Drew Bar 100, just 32 months on my Twitch channel. Thank you, Drew Bar. 32 months, man. He's been subscribed for 32. You guys didn't subscribe to me on Twitch for free if you have Prime. So we'd love you to do that. It'd be great. Um, Shell says, Jake DeMarco, I've been asked by Bullfrog in the DMs to donate money to make him champ. <laughs> Bullfrog going I around. told him originally, you know, had, he said he wasn't going to cash in until uh, championship night. That's what he told me. I said, well, don't. Hold on to yep, it. I told him that and, too. And uh, I said, I think I can convince people that you might be better off as champ. He's like, I thought you didn't have mm -hmm. money. I said, I don't have money. I don't need money. I'm going to tell people that you're going to be a great champion over Casey. Wow. And here's why. I thought it could have added to the story of Monetize This. We need a common enemy to unite against. Who better than Bullfrog to have all of us rise up to take the belt back from? I think it could have been a great story, but he uh, he believed in the word of Welsh and fell blindly. You know, um, 
Travis, uh, oh, I don't even know if I can say this, but no, this isn't that bad. He just said like he's got fucking clips of uh, the th- I don't know, funny clips of him talking about how he's gonna carve up and kill YR and other people. Yeah, he was going nuclear Jesus. after he got uh, betrayed. I guess you could call it from Welsh. Yeah, it was freaking out. And then from there, it only exploded oh, worse. So can't be as bad as this, right? Very disappointed in Joe today. People in front of Joe's audience believe that we're the bad guys. Most dangerous group in this community. But I would love to sick some big community on Joe Crumb's show. Wouldn't you love to just take one of the worst, most maniacal communities ever and just sick it on Joe Crumb's fucking community? Thank you, Jake, for the uh, 17 months, brother. Free? Yeah, baby. Free to do it, guys. Jake did it, and he loves me. I should do it back to him. Just send, like, the worst of the worst that you can find. And just sick them on Joe Crone's show community. Just get everybody fucking swatted and killed, shot up. Whoa. All right. Whoa. That's, uh, that's, that's nice. I don't... On Joe Crone's show community. Whoa. Just get everybody fucking swatted and killed, shot up. The dark Jesus. web and just sick them on the Joe Crone show community. Then get them swatted like again. The worst, you sick like the worst community ever. Go find some fucked up community from the dark web and just sick them on the Joe Cronin show community. Jeez, bro. Imagine Joe Cronin being live and knock at his window. Some fucking guy in a scream mask. Come on, man. Pathic problems, and I do know that Joe Cronin's mother is in a psych ward. Oh, I swear to God, if you don't stop, I will shoot you, Joe Cronin. This is like, I have, I have a 15-minute clip of just everybody threatening to kill me. Take me down. I have the, it's 15 minutes. It's amazing. It just keeps growing. It once was only 16 seconds. Remember. It's crazy. You keep. Think I would react like this over Ken talking about my grandfather when he died? As, he died after having dementia. And said, yeah, it's disgusting. Imagine how that statement was going to work out in the court. <laughs> I'm fully admitting Imagine. that I'm doing these things on purpose to people. Of 400 people in front of Joe's audience believe that we're the bad guys. Joe Cronin's the biggest scumbag in this community. He has multiple troll accounts, multiple Skype accounts. He has everything, bro. Joe and a bunch of fucking minions that work for him, dog. For real. They're the most dangerous group in this community. <laughs> I would love to sick some big community on Joe Cronin's show. Wouldn't you love to just take one of the worst most maniacal communities ever and just sick it on Joe Cronin's fucking community. Just send like the worst of the worst that you could find and just sick them on Joe Cronin's community from the dark web and just sick them on the Joe. Joe dreams of them things. Like I think he wants some fucking guy in a scream mask. Come on, man. And Joe dreams of them things. Like I think he wants it to happen almost. I think Joe almost wants it to happen. Sometimes I believe it because this I know the psychology of serial killers and weird people that have <laughs> psychopathic problems, and I do know that Joe Cronin's mother is in a psych ward. Oh, I swear to and, and I, I'm a part of the fucking revolution. You something, Daniel? My, Shut you, Joe Cronin. To your heart, you and your daughter Brenna, and your wife Leah that wants to leave you. Let me tell you something, Daniel. My name is Scott McKinnon, and I'm a part of the fucking revolution that will take you down. Jesus, good that's, lord, that's uh, that's something. That that's some um, pretty fucking scary. You're fucking done by. You're fucking <laughs> done by. <laughs> You're fucking done by. Oh my god. Yeah, what do you want? Nickers, nickers, nickers. <laughs> Jesus. You ever hear that clip? YR calls a show. He calls <laughs> yes. it calls a show and he just says the N word over and over Repeatedly again. Over and over and, and over. And they're just like Wow. Like, I, you yeah, were cutting the ad want? earlier. You said that you you know that you were commentating on the match and you're like oh what a monkey flip and i was gonna go in on you for it but oh, i was oh. like i better not do it during the ad read so <laughs> enjoy this i mean he really wants a piece of my daughter he says yeah i know really that's, that's the scariest part nippers, nippers, nippers. oh my god that's just terrible nippers, oh nippers. my god 
What an idiot. <laughs> what an idiot. He calls in the show and just says that. And the funny thing is, Bullfrog started off the night with probably the greatest line drop that he's had to date. He did? With that clip that you had of him. That was hilarious. Wasn't that the start of Monetize This? I thought it was. Maybe it's all running together for me. But he had that clip where uh, he was with um tony was going off and then he oh yeah, yeah when it hit so that tony was gay yeah you know that was priceless yeah it was hilarious i was dying laughing at that and then he had to go ahead and cash in and ruin it then he ruined it all he ruined it all what a, all from grace people bullfrog no more anyway those are funny anyway. funny little clips to uh play let me play the donations speaking of playing how many don't check out the weekend they might reboot the Batman animated series. That was the best outside of Gotham. Real dark version of Batman and best version show wise outside Dark Knight movie trilogy. Fade to black, thanks, man. You know, talking about Batman and the best version and this version and Superman versions and all these versions is actually reminds me of talking about people crossing over from New Japan. <laughs> like, I just yeah, fucking I fuck got onto it because it's all related, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, no. Gotham had a really great Joker, the first one there. That, what was it Jerome or Jeremiah? Whichever one was the, the crazy one at first. That was an excellent Joker. Oh, uh, uh, D. Welsh yeah. wanted, wanted this played. I just remembered. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta have this happen. I pulled it up. Recap from monetize this this past Friday. Here's the monetize this recap as uh, Bullfrog got turned on here. Wow! It, it could be the end of the monetize this championship. Oh, definitely. Because it's, it's, it's no, there's no the oh, oh, my oh my god! Monetize that. Told you. I'm gonna fight. Told you. you can oh, oh, it's oh no! no. See you later. See you later. Monetize that. That's it. 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 Did you there really think go. I would align myself with you? Oh, Guess shit. What? what? Swear. Oh, Point no. Wait, oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> JT. What a fail. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Ah. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah. He got me. He got me. Oh, my God. He got me. Oh my god, that's <laughs> fucking hilarious! Oh my god, I was listening. One hundred and fifty points either, to so Casey is raw. <laughs> Why? That is Why? too funny. Oh my god, that's wicked funny. Do you think that was a last minute donation from Welsh when he oh got Oh my god. Shit all over by all of us. Points to the true champion no. both frog. I think he oh, planned it. Like a kick ass old take my pants that's, off that belt that's is like going a to Ohio. Kick ass old school hardcore match. Uh and just like that D Welsh goes full face like all of a sudden. That was great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, made, I called you a retard. <laughs> well, I, I'm not, but I'll, I'll uh, cheers him to this one. 42 now. <laughs> Randy Viper's still got the dream alive for Bullfrog. Um, hey, you never know. Bullfrog, never know. this whole time Bullfrog's muted, too. He's Here he is in the middle of his battle, and he sits on hold muted, even though he's back on the show. You know show. what? Uh, if I win tonight, I'm firing D. Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if you think you're gonna pull a fastball on me? I've been watching you the front. whole time, boy. <laughs> he did. Oh my God. What do you mean? I think he, I think he just resigned with that donation. 
<laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? So, no, no, no. so wait, if, if you say, win, uh, is he... keep your friends close, but your enemies <laughs> close. And that's exactly what he did. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate yeah. blend. Gukashino tipped eleven dollars <laughs> points. To oh my me. god! I just, yeah. Yeah. I just heard what fucking, I <laughs> just heard what Parker wants me to play that Drew said last night. Oh yeah. Oh my god, bro! When you wait till you hear this, oh my god, <laughs> what the fuck, Drew? You're a messed up person, gatekeeper, Drew. Oh my god, what a messed up person he is. Wait till you hear this. Oh my god, let me get the let me get the fucking thing out to clip this. This has to be clipped. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I've got I've got to clip this. This is just too funny. He knew it was too good. Parker Parker knew. Oh my god, dude! This I can't believe he said this. Well, now we're. Oh my god, here it is. All right, hit record. All right, here it is. Too late on that. All the fucking puss. It's just unbelievable. He says season this. trophy award winning. All right, here it is. Kill children. Oh my god. Jesus. Kill children. <laughs> Drew, what the hell, man? What's wrong with him? Kill Kevin children. Tell him why you want to kill, kill children. children? What the fuck? Kill what children. I can't believe he says that. I mean, he says it. Are you really surprised? Kill children. That is. Uh, I mean, he said a lot of things that were questionable. Kill children. Wow. Does that really shock kill, you? Kill from children. Through? Kill children, kill it children. Be his own children, but I mean, you can go listen to it to yourself on corrupted podcast from the other night, which I still haven't labeled the episode number yet, but it's up. Five hundred and fifty views, corrupted podcast from last night or nineteen hours ago. Now he literally says that this sick son of a bitch. He says that Parker, Parker, thanks for the donation. Sadistic bastard. That is really strange. Like that's something I wouldn't expect to hear from him, especially since he has a kid. You know, um, but yeah, I didn't picture that coming out of Drew's mouth. Just into it. That is concerning, to say the least. Very concerning. Um, in fact, I got to Facebook him right now and tell him, you know, that I am, uh, I am highly concerned. I'm very concerned about this. Um, but aren't you worried about how Becky Lynch and Alexa Bliss and others celebrated Valentine's Day? Isn't that your ultimate worry of today? Why do were they feeding their their babies <sighs> chocolate? God knows, but that was the, you know the stories I saw all day. What is Becky Lynch doing for Valentine's Day? That's their only audience left, by the way. Are those Twitter f like weird women on Twitter who are like, "I love you, women." Like that's all like that's left, dude. I almost, dude. Yeah, the oh uh, my god, the weird. reality show women. You know the total yeah, diva. Exactly, like just weird. yeah, because people were fighting with Casey Catanzaro on Twitter before because she was saying how restaurants open near her. You don't need a mask when you sit kill and children. Eat. <laughs> Sorry. So no, that's a terrible clip of Drew. I mean, my God, I don't know how he's going to answer for that. But she goes ahead and she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry for anybody that I upset." And it's like you shouldn't have to apologize because you said that you were able to eat at a restaurant near you because they're open. That's not your responsibility or fault. Or it's the same thing with the Gina Carano stuff. It's the same, you know, just just everybody coming after people for nonsense. Oh God! It's yeah, non just shut up. I think the people that come at anybody, we should start like taking out people that come at people, like people who attempt to cancel people. I think we should just fucking like cut their body parts off and feed them to wolves. She ended up deleting her Twitter account. So yeah, she's, Casey still has her Instagram, but she got rid of her Twitter because of all this crap. And it's right. like, so she has to completely remove herself from social media because. People, a select group of people, have to be constant assholes. Come on, that's that's horrific. But it's constant. That's it's it's just never ending. Yeah, Sadly. never ends. Um, I don't know, man. There's there's really nothing else to say tonight about wrestling. I mean, this was like I said, six point five out of ten. Um, you know, it's really missing the crowd and the commentary and some other things but you know it is what it is and it's good and it, it is what it is I guess uh, I don't know I agree uh, you know 6.5 is a pretty decent score and I, I am curious to see what happens Wednesday now tomorrow we have a six man tag on Raw Welsh let me know whoopee shit that's you know it's everybody that's in the chamber so they're going to make everybody in the chamber go ahead and work together 
who cares? Who wants to see that? How is that exciting or interesting or, you know, that, that there's nothing to that that makes anybody want to go ahead and watch Raw. You've got six men in the chamber, and that's how you're going to go ahead and get people to be interested, having them team up. Lucky us. Just just lucky us. Hmm. Because they don't even have defined clear roles for some of these people. Orton's a heel, but, you know, AJ kind of goes back and forth sometimes. So you're going to have Sheamus, who just turned. Mm-hmm. So he's a heel. Miz is a heel. Casey was in trouble because she hosted a B-Day party. No social distancing in November. Then there and Ricochet had a night party that had Marty Skrull in it and no social distancing or masks. Steve Cutler was at this party. Who's release? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was let go because he ended up catching COVID. Yeah, which, But they didn't you know, release anybody else who was at the party. makes no sense to me. The point is people are coming after her constantly. And it's like, you know, the, the issue started today with her, you know, with the mask shit. Who gives a shit? It, it doesn't change your life or affect your life if it's if it's not in front of you. If a person in front of you isn't wearing a mask, you want to say something, fine. But why do you need to attack people on Twitter and, and who gives a shit? It's not going to change their opinions. You're just causing more of a fight. <laughs> yeah, you know, if we if we do throwback reviews, I'll probably put them up on Patreon. Um, we're working on the ideas. Um, Patreon is up. Uh, we'll have some more stuff later. And, uh, guys, I want to say thank you to everybody. We are going to get out of here. And uh, we love you all. Thanks for Happy watching. Valentine's Day. Stay sexy. Yep. And, you know, if it wasn't Valentine's Day, I might hang out and do more Sunday night gaming and stuff like that. And, and I may come back on the air tonight. I don't know. Um, but for right now, I'm going to impregnate Leah's mouth. All right. And I'm going to send Jake nude photos of the situation happening. Ooh, baby. We, we can trade you. pictures again. I'm down. Yeah. Ventiuno coming in from Shell was the top donation of the night. She remains the top dog down below. She is no dog, though. She'll fuck the shit out of you. Um, thank you, everybody. Vin- <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Uh, Finn Balor, Pete <laughs> More Dunn, ways than one. NXT Vengeance. And more to come for me and Jake. We'll see you tomorrow for the Raw review. If I don't see you again tonight, go check out Corrupted Podcast if you guys didn't see that. If you guys are subbed to the uh, Corrupted channel, you may have gotten a free episode. But everybody else, obviously, you guys can get it on Patreon. Thanks for the support. And thanks to the $25 producers. We'll see you tomorrow night. Fucking done by... Can you shoot me? Joe, I swear to God, if you don't stop, I will shoot you, Joe Clinton!